you want to start algorithmic trading and you understand that there are massive advantages in being able to test different trading approaches using historical data with the goal of being able to eventually automate those trading systems to execute trades and generate profits in real time. And whether you're an analyst at a commodity trading house and you want to use algorithms for market analysis or you're a trader at a hedge fund and you want to build a portfolio of algorithms to comp Complement your current trading approach, or you're a private trader looking to diversify your investments with commodity futures, you can future proof your career, you can add an important skill set to your resume and LinkedIn, and you can become a better, more profitable, more confident trader. There has never been a better time to start algo trading. I'm Dave Whitcomb, head of research for Peak Trading Research, and this algo trading course built by the Commodity Special specialist at peak is your number one tool for getting started with algorithmic trading in commodity markets. Algorithmic trading, also called systematic trading or quant trading, or as we prefer to call it at peak rule-based trading or evidence-based trading, is how the world's most successful hedge funds and traders make profits. There is a reason that 90% of traders don't make money. It's because technicals don't don't work, most candlestick patterns don't work, and journaling about your emotions about the market doesn't work. The good news is that you can quickly join the top 10% of traders and have a much better chance of generating real profits in real time if you master the algorithmic trading basics that we will cover in this course. You can think of this course as a full university course on algorithmic trading for commodity market futures. But that said, all of the concepts that we'll be learning are applicable to any market. That includes stocks, bonds, FX, cryptos. The algorithmic trading concepts that we'll be talking about are universal. This 2023 course comprises 16 different sessions, which focus broadly on algorithmic trading basics, system building blocks, optimization, incubation, and portfolio construction, and finally getting started with live trading. Now, what you are watching right now is the full course. I'm not going to ask you to join some Slack channel or Discord or Patreon. This is it. This is the full course. And you don't even need to take notes. All of the code that we're going to walk through, all of the cheat sheets and some great bonus extras are available in the full course packet that you can find at peakalgo.com. The only thing that I will ask is that if you have any questions along the way, please pop them in the comments below. This really helps our channel grow and helps us improve future iterations of this course. So with that algorithmic trading full course 2023, let's get into it. If you are watching this course, you likely already know that there are some massive advantages to algorithmic trading. In this section, we're gonna talk about the six main advantages to algo trading and why you should stop wasting your time and your energy and your money on discretionary trading. So let's jump into it. Let's start with the number one advantage to algorithmic trading, and that is backtesting. When you trade quantitatively, when you trade using algorithms, algorithms, you are predefining a set of rules that you are going to use to trade. And when you write down your strategy logic, when you actually code that trading system, you can then back test that system using historical data. So whether the trading idea that's in your head is a breakout approach or a mean reversion approach or a seasonal trading approach, you can test that trading approach. You can test the trading system. And if you're using a professional trade, trading platform like TradeStation or MultiCharts. You can add that strategy to a chart to see visually how the system will trade. And you can also look at historical performance statistics, my favorite of which is an equity curve. So what is an equity curve? An equity curve shows you your cumulative profits that you would have generated had you traded this system through time. For example, this equity curve on Coco 128 minutes 
minute price bars shows me that this trading system would have made about $85,000 in cumulative profits since early 2010. If you are a visual learner, which most traders tend to be, you'll find that an equity curve is a really quick way to see if a strategy works. A nice upward sloping equity curve shows you that the strategy at least historically has made money over time without a lot of big drawdowns, without a lot of periods where the strategy did not work. So for example, if you are looking to evaluate a strategy that you're getting from an external source like peakalgo.com, the first thing you're going to want to see for that strategy is likely an equity curve. And you'll also want to know if that equity curve assumes realistic slippage and commission costs. But bottom line, that first advantage of algorithmic trading is back testing. It allows you to look at performance statistics to see if the strategy works and it allows you to see that equity curve. The number two advantage to algorithmic trading is that you are always in the market. Your systems can always be on. You can turn on your trading systems so that they are always in the market. They are always looking to take new trades or exit trades to manage risk. And they're doing this with a better attention span and a better reaction time than a human ever could. And this is related to advantage number three, and that is your trading will become more consistent. It doesn't matter if you haven't slept well or you're having a bad day or you're distracted by other things, your trading systems are always on. They will always react consistently. This means you can be far more consistent with how you deploy your trading capital and how you manage your risk. Reason number four is better diversification. If you are discretionary trading, you are likely glued to your screen all the time watching just a handful of markets. If you are algorithmic trading, the number of trading systems that you can run really just depends on your account size, your capital, and how many good trading systems you have. Now, every trader is different, but for me, I find that that sweet spot is generally around 25 to 30 trading systems. Fewer than that, and I tend to find I don't have a lot of active trades at any given time, but more than that, and I tend to kind of lose the plot. But every trader is different. Maybe you just want to flip on five automated trading systems for the energy markets, and your friend wants to flip on 50 different trading systems across all the different liquid US futures markets. Reason number five is better risk management. One of the biggest problems that discretionary traders often have is taking stops and taking profit. You could add a stop loss or a take profit level or a trailing stop to every single one of your systematic trading strategies. Not only is this good risk management, but it just helps you sleep better at night. It's a huge advantage versus discretionary trading, knowing that you can take that human emotion out of things. Reason number six, and I cannot overstate how important this one is, is confidence. The number one advantage that you will notice when you get into algorithmic trading is that your confidence in your trading approach and your trading systems will increase. You can write down your trading approach, you can code it up, you can back test it. You can look at a performance report and hopefully see a nice upward sloping equity curve for your strategy, which gives you the confidence that this trading approach would have worked for the past 10 or 15 or 20 years. There is nothing that comes close to that in the world of discretionary trading. You can also perform some more advanced analytics on your historical strategy returns, like Monte Carlo analysis, walk forwards, correlation tables. You can also incubate your strategies. You can see how your systematic strategies perform by paper trading on new unseen data to give you the confidence that this strategy will probably hold up in real time. But again, the confidence that you can get from coding a strategy, testing it, seeing how it would perform in real time, this is a huge advantage. Those are the six big advantages of algorithmic trading. Now let's move on and talk about what you need to get started with algorithmic trading.
In our last session, we talked about the big advantages of algorithmic trading. Now let's talk about the things that you need to get started with algorithmic trading. There are four main things that you need to get started algorithmic trading. Number one, you need a trading platform. Number two, you need data that that platform can access for system analysis or real-time trading. Number three, you need a funded brokerage account. And finally, number four, or you need a trading system or preferably a portfolio of trading systems. In terms of finding a good trading platform, you have a lot of choice between different desktop or web-based or mobile trading applications in which you can write strategy code, you can back test that strategy code on historical data, and you can eventually automate the strategy to execute market orders on your behalf. These are some of the most popular trading platforms platforms and the strategy coding language that each platform uses. TradeStation and MultiCharts both use Easy Language. MetaTrader uses MQL4 or 5. TradingView uses its own proprietary PineScript. NinjaTrader uses NinjaScript, which is based on C Sharp, and Quantopian uses Python. Now in this course, we're going to be focusing mostly on Easy Language, which is the coding language used by both TradeStation and multi-charts. TradeStation and multi-charts are exceptional trading platforms for systematic trading in commodity futures. If you want to see a deep dive on the differences between TradeStation and multi-charts, you can click a video link here. Easy Language, as the name suggests, is an exceptionally easy to learn coding language that's written specifically for traders. It's easy to write, it's easy to understand. A lot of popular trading books, the kind we'll talk about at the end of this course are written in easy language. Now we're going to be going through a lot of easy language strategies in this course. But remember, if you're using another platform like MetaTrader or TradingView or NinjaTrader, you can always take that strategy code and translate it to your platform. All of the concepts that we're going to be talking about in today's course are universal. They are not specific to any one coding language. Data. The second thing that you are going to need to start systematic trading is data. Your trading platform is going to need to have access to historical data for analysis and testing of your systematic trading systems. And ultimately, your trading platform is going to need access to live data so you can execute systematic trading strategy orders in real time. Now, every trading platform is different. Some trading platforms like TradeStation are your data provider, but other trading platforms like multi-charts will require that you plug into an external data provider. Now, every trading platform is different on how they treat data and how you can subscribe to data, but that information is always very clear on their website, how you can plug in data to the trading platform, and you should be prepared that this will be an additional expense. For example, if you're a commodity trader, you might want to pay for Chicago Board of Trade data for markets like corn and wheat and soybeans. You can start with delayed data for your strategy analysis and testing that will be cheaper, something like $20 a month. And then when you're ready to start systematic trading in real time, you can start paying for live data that's going to be more expensive, say $100 a month. Very big picture, whether you're using delayed data or live data, these trading platforms make it very easy for you to get data into their platforms for your analysis or live trading. The third thing that you need to get started algorithmic trading is a funded brokerage account. When you trade commodity futures, the exchange that you are facing needs access to what is called margin. Basically, you need to set a small amount of money aside, like a down payment for the right to trade commodity futures contracts. Here is a great cheat sheet that we've put together with the margin rates for the top 25 U.S. commodity futures markets. This is included in the full course packet that's available at peakalgo.com. What you'll see is that for a market like corn, you need to have at minimum $2,300 in your account in margin to trade one contract of corn futures. Now that's the minimum amount that you need in your account. Realistically, you are 
going to want more than that. How much money do you need to trade a systematic trading strategy? As a good rule of thumb, you are generally going to want to have 2.5 times the minimum required margin for that contract. What does that mean? You take the number in that margin column and you multiply it by 2.5. Now for a market like heating oil with a big contract value and a relatively high margin of about $10,000, that means that your trading account should have $25,000 in it for every heating oil systematic trading strategy that you turn on. Now, I know this is frustrating, especially for beginners. I know this is probably not what you want to hear, that you need to have a whole lot of money set aside for margin. The good news is there are plenty of commodity markets with relatively small notional sizes and small margin requirements. There are also micro and mini contracts. So a lot of these contracts have smaller versions that require about a fifth of the size of margin set aside. You're just getting started in systematic trading or you have a smaller brokerage account size, it is a great option to start with mini and micro size contracts. In terms of a funded brokerage account, there are some big differences between the different trading platforms. For example, TradeStation acts as your broker, so you directly fund an account, you send money to TradeStation, whereas multi-charts can plug into a number of different brokers. You just give them access to your trading account. But again, big picture, any trading platform is going to need access to money, to investment, to capital that you've set aside to trade. The fourth and final thing that you need to start systematic trading is a trading system, or even better, a set of different diversified trading systems across a lot of different markets. We're gonna come back to this theme time and time again in this course that one of your big advantages as a systematic trader is your ability to turn on lots of different diversified futures trading strategies. Now, as part of this course, we are going to go through the building blocks for successful systematic trading strategies. Entries, exits, filters, and of course, if you want instant access to a portfolio of diversified futures trading strategies, you can head to peakalgo.com. These are real systematic trading strategies that have performed well in real time that are in tune with the current market. They had positive profits in the month prior. So whether you're a beginner looking for coding examples of real systematic trading strategies, or you're a professional commodity trader looking to build out your portfolio, these strategies at peakalgo.com are a great option. So those are the four things that you need to start systematic trading. A trading platform data that you can plug into the platform for analysis and real-time trading, a brokerage account that your trading platform can access to trade, and you need a trading system, preferably trading systems. And that is now what we're gonna spend most of this course talking about is how you can build and test fully coded systematic trading strategies that have a great chance of working in real time. Now, before we move on, I want to say a few quick notes about peak trading research and what puts us in such a unique position to build an algo trading course like this. Peak trading research is an independent quantitative commodity research company based in Switzerland. We focus on non-fundamental quantitative price drivers for agriculture, energy, and metals commodity markets. Our clients are hedge funds, family offices, private private traders, and many of the world's largest commercial trading houses. And because we provide a unique and quantitative view on commodity markets, we are frequently quoted in the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, Market Watch, Morningstar, Bloomberg, and other publications. And as part of our research for our clients, we are building and testing a lot of quantitative trading systems. Many of those systems we make available to clients through 
through our site, peakalgo.com. So this course is both for our commodity research clients who are interested in getting up to speed with building and testing systematic trading strategies, as well as our algo trading clients who are interested in building a portfolio of systematic trading strategies. So if you are looking for an algorithmic trading course built by an industry leading quantitative commodity research company hosted by a professional commodity trader with more than two decades of experience at two of the US's largest private commodity trading houses, then you have come to the right place. Now, one of the advantages of algorithmic trading, of rule-based trading, is that you can confirm for yourself all of the concepts that we will cover in this course. You should not trust any trader, any educator, any research company without confirming the results for yourself. And that is a theme that we'll be coming back to again and again in this course is that you can build strategies yourself, test strategies yourself, and set your portfolio of real systematic trading strategies up to have the best chance of generating profits for you in real time. We've now finished the first section of this course, which is Algo Basics, and we're going to move on to the second section of this course, which is System Building Blocks. This is the foundation, the very beginning of the systematic strategy development process. This is what successful systematic trading strategy development looks like. We are going to spend the next five sessions at the bottom of this mountain, at the foundation of this strategy strategy development pyramid. In this section on system building blocks, we'll talk about systems building 101, go through some entries, exits, some system examples, and also entry filters. And after that, we'll move on to the next section on optimization, incubation, and portfolio construction. Now, in the next few sessions, we'll be looking at a lot of strategy logic that is written in the easy language coding language. All of this strategy code, the entries, the exits, the strategy system examples that we'll go through, our Opus strategy that you can use to test thousands of different entry and exit combinations, and a version of our filters code built specifically for this course is available in the course packet that you can find at peakalgo.com. So don't feel that you need to spend your time writing this out, typing it out, taking screenshots. All of the code that that we'll go through is available as text files and also if you're a trade station or multi-charts user as CSV files. Again, that is all available in the course packet at peakalgo.com. Let's now move on to the next section, system building blocks. Big picture, let's review what we've talked about in this course so far. We've talked about Algo Trading 101, what is algorithmic trading. We talked about the massive advantages of algorithmic trading versus discretionary trading. And we've reviewed the four things that you need to get started with algorithmic trading. So now let's move on to the fun stuff. Let's talk about building and testing real systematic trading strategies, as well as the tools and concepts that you need to understand to ensure that your systematic trading strategies have a great chance of making money and generating profits in real time. Now, algorithmic trading is rule-based trading. You are telling your trading platform that you want to trade a certain market based on a predefined set of rules. And when you write down those rules in a certain coding language, you are writing a script. You are writing a simple set of rules that your trading platform can access and add to a chart and generate profit statistics so you can gauge if you want to trade that strategy or not. And all of the automated trading platforms that we talked about in our section on the four things you need to start algorithmic trading, all those trading platforms are chart-based trading platforms, meaning you're writing your script, you're writing down the rules that you want to trade, you're adding that script to a chart, and then you're deciding 
deciding based on how the system trades, the profit statistics, if you want to automate that trading system. That's the process we're going to be talking about again and again in this course, writing a script, adding it to a chart, looking at how the system trades and some profit statistics and deciding if it's a good trading system. Now, all trading strategies are written as conditional if then statements. It doesn't matter if you're coding in the easy language coding language or PineScript or Python or C sharp. Every strategy that you write is going to be a complete conditional statement. These conditional statements are almost always written as if this condition exists, then do this. And that this is mostly trade the market. Some good examples of simple conditional statements are if momentum is positive, then buy the market. So buy a futures contract. If a moving average is crossing below another moving average, then sell the market. If it's January 15th, then buy the market and get out after 20 days. These are simple conditional if then trading statements. Now, one of the big advantages of the easy language coding language that we'll be using a lot in this course is that as the name suggests, it's a very easy language to understand. When you are writing down your trading rules that the system will follow, those conditional if then statements, easy language really writes and reads like a sentence. So let's look at an example of one of these if then statements. Let's look at a very simple two line complete systematic trading strategy. Let's jump into the TradeStation trading platform. Now this is what TradeStation looks like right out of the box. So if you have never used TradeStation or you've never used any other automated trading platform, this is generally what a automated trading platform will look like to start. We are going to go up and open up our easy language editor. Think of this as the place where you are going to write your scripts. You are going to write down the rules and the strategies that you want to trade. So I'm going to open up a new strategy. I am simply going to call this our first strategy two lines of code simple enough. I'm going to delete the starter code that it gives us. And for this strategy, we are going to write this like a sentence. So we're going to build a momentum strategy that says if the close is the highest close of the past 10 days, then buy the next bar at market. So basically get in on the next possible opportunity, the next time the market opens, if this is a daily bar. And then if time has passed, so if 10 bars have passed, so if we're using daily bars, that will be 10 days. If 10 bars have passed since I bought the market, then sell next bar at market. This is now a complete, and I'm gonna verify it so I know it's a complete strategy. This is a complete, fully coded, systematic trading strategy. It has those nice conditional statements. If the market is going higher, so if the market closes the highest close, then buy that upward momentum. And if 10 bars have gone by or 10 days have gone by, get out of that long position. Now that we have our strategy written, let's add our strategy to a chart. So we are going to bring up a chart and let's make this a heating oil chart. So we are going to be looking at the heating oil futures market. I'm going to go to my time frame, customize. There's the ticker for heating oil at HO is the heating oil continuous contract. And let's make this 240 minute bars. So that is a four hour bar futures. Let's go back to 2010 and voila. There there is the chart for heating oil, 240 minute bars. I can then add the simple strategy script that we've written, that two lines of code, simple first strategy, two line of code strategy, and there we go. TradeStation can see it. TradeStation says this is a good strategy. Let's pop it in the chart and we can see how this strategy trades on a chart. It's a momentum strategy. Again, we are buying higher closes. So if the close is the highest close, 
close of the past 10 bars, the past 10 240 minute bars, the system will buy. Buying upward momentum, getting out after 10 bars, buying upward momentum, getting out after 10 bars. It's generally a pretty good momentum strategy. Now, one of the advantages of this being a rule-based system, a systematic trading strategy is that we can look at a strategy performance report. We can see that simple approach of buying upward momentum, buying higher closes in the heating oil futures market, it's done okay. The strategy has made about $120,000 over the past 12 years. If we look at a equity curve, it's okay. It's done well recently, not so well in the years prior, but as a starting point, it's good to see that this simple breakout system, two lines of code can make money in heating oil futures. So that's systematic trading, writing down simple rule-based conditional statements, adding that strategy to a chart so we can see how the system trades and we can look at some basic profit statistics. This is the core of systematic trading and it's what we're gonna be spending a lot of this course doing, building strategies, testing strategies, see how they trade and gauge if it's a strategy that we want to turn on and automate to generate profits in real time. Now, one quick note before we move on, we wrote that simple trading strategy in the easy language coding language, but here's that same strategy written in PineScript and that same strategy written in NinjaScript, C Sharp. What you'll notice is that once you understand what that easy language code is accomplishing, buying a higher high, getting out after 10 bars, the differences between easy language and PineScript and NinjaScript and Python, it's like the differences between Italian and Spanish and Portuguese and French. These are the romance languages of systematic trading. So again, in this course today, focus more on the trade logic and what we're doing with these strategies. Don't get too hung up on the fact it's written in easy language. All of the concepts that we're talking about today are universal to systematic trading, regardless of the coding language that you use. Now we're gonna be doing a lot of strategy building today, but if you want to watch another video on building a simple systematic trading strategy, you can click here to watch our video titled Build Your First Strategy. It's another good overview of some of the simple building blocks that we'll be going through today. Entries, exits, variables, filters. And that's what we'll be talking about in our next three sessions is strategy entries, strategy exits, filters, really those fundamental building blocks that you can use to create exceptional systematic trading strategies. So let's move on to the next session and talk about the most fundamental building block of a systematic trading strategy, great strategy entries. Every trading strategy has two important building blocks, and that is entries and exits. A strategy entry gets you into a long or short position in a commodity future or stock or bond, and an exit gets you out of that position. So let's look at the 10 greatest of all time entries that you can be using to build profitable systematic trading strategies. And of course, you don't need to write any of these entries down. They're all available in the peak algo trading package at peakalgo.com. Now, what makes these the greatest trading entries? You are gonna see these trading entries time and time again in the strategies that we build at peakalgo.com. You'll see them in systematic strategy books. You'll see them in YouTube videos online. And most importantly, you'll find yourself falling back on these strategy entries as a great foundation upon which you can build more complicated systematic strategies. Bottom line, they work. You're gonna to see them a lot and most of the strategies you build and trade will rely on these basic strategy entries. Now, as always, we'll be going through these strategies written in the easy language coding language, but focus more on the strategy logic, what the strategy is trying to do and less on the specific code. So if you want to recreate what these strategies are doing in Python or R or C++ or Microsoft Excel, you can do that. These strategy concepts 
concept entries are universal. For our first strategy entry, let's look at a simple price pattern. What this strategy does is it says if the close of the last bar was greater than the open of the last bar and the close two bars ago was greater than the open two bars ago and the close three bars ago, was greater than the open, then buy next bar at market. So buy upward momentum and vice versa. If you have lower closes for three bars in a row, then sell short the next bar at market. Now, one of the advantages, of course, of coding this up and adding it to a platform like TradeStation is that we can see how this strategy works on a chart. So here we have three lower bars. The strategy sells short. We have three rising bars. The strategy goes long. This strategy on crude oil 240 minute bars has been working pretty well recently. The strategy successfully bought upward momentum, sold upward momentum, bought upward momentum, and sold downward momentum. Now for our next strategy entry, let's look at a simple breakout. This works well for markets that trend. So what this strategy does is it says if the market close of the last bar is the highest close of the past 10 bars, then buy the next bar at market. And if the market close is the lowest close of the past 10 bars, then sell short at market. So again, it's a different way to buy upward momentum and sell downward momentum. And we can see what this strategy looks like on a chart. Let's add this to a gold 240 minute bar chart. We can see that when we're at the highest close of the past 10 bars, the system goes long. When we're at the lowest close of the past 10 bars, the system sells short short gold futures system chopped around a little bit here, bought then sold then bought. And then here it went short again at the lowest bar of the last 10 bars and successfully made a nice short trade. Now this is a good opportunity for us to add our very first input. So we can add an input called length X and replace our static value of 10 bars with our new input. And this allows us to optimize this input value in TradeStation. And TradeStation will tell us instead of 10, the best value to use between five and 15 is going to be a value of five. So if we optimize for net profit, we can see that actually a value of five is better than 10 for buying higher highs and selling lower lows. We can see the system is doing pretty well here in terms of buying higher highs, selling lower lows. It's catching some nice moves on gold 240 minute bars. Now let's look at a simple mean reversion entry. This is for markets that mean revert. So unlike our breakout strategy that buys higher closes, in this case, we are going to be selling short the highest close of the last X bars. So this was our breakout strategy. Instead of buying a higher close, we are going to sell short. And instead of selling short on a lower close, we're going to be buying. So again, selling short a higher close, buying a lower close. And if we add our strategy, our mean reversion strategy entry to a mean reverting market like the Coco market, this is Coco daily bars, we can see that this simple mean reversion strategy that buys lower closes, sells higher closes, buys lower closes, sells higher closes, has been working exceptionally well in a mean reverting sideways trading market environment. For our next strategy entry, let's look at using a market indicator like trading volume or RSI momentum or MACD momentum or ADX momentum as a requirement before buying lower closes or selling short higher closes. Basically, this trading system is looking for a low volume or a low momentum reversal as a signal to trade. We can see what this looks like in feeder cattle, which is a smaller market in which volume is an important indicator for the next direction of the market. This system does a nice job of selling short, higher closes, buying lower closes when volume is also dropping at the same time. 
we can see that the system has performed fairly well over the past year. We see a nice upward sloping cumulative profit line, an upward sloping equity curve. For our next strategy entry, let's look at dueling momentum. And this will be the first time that we incorporate a second strategy input called length two. So in this case, we are going to be going with short term momentum, in this case, 15 bar momentum against long term term momentum, for example, 50 bar momentum. So how does this strategy work? If the most recent close is above the close 15 bars ago, but still below the close 50 bars ago, the strategy will buy the next buyer at market and vice versa. If the most recent close is below the close 15 bars ago, but above the close 50 bars ago, the strategy will sell short next bar at market. If we add our dueling momentum strategy to an orange juice 230 minute bar chart, we can see how this dueling momentum strategy works. The strategy is buying when prices are low, but near term momentum is turning higher and it's selling short when prices are high, but near term momentum is turning lower. And if we look at a strategy performance report, we can see a nice upward sloping equity curve over the past 10 years. This dueling momentum approach in orange juice futures has performed pretty well. For our next strategy entry, let's look at using a date to trade. This is the foundation for trading price seasonals. What this strategy does is the strategy will buy if the date crosses over September 1st, 2022. It will do the same thing for 2021 and the same thing for 2020. This is good for a market like corn, which is seasonally bullish. Corn futures tend to rise in September and October and November during US harvest months. We can add a simple bars sense entry exit it to this strategy to get a sense for what it looks like on a chart. So what this system is doing is again buying corn futures on September 1st, 2020, on September 1st, 2021, and again on September 1st of this year, 2022, and exiting that position 90 days later. Now you might ask why use this date crosses over code instead of just if the date equals September 1st. The reason for that is if your September 1st falls on a weekend or a holiday, you still want TradeStation to pick up a trading signal for the next open session. By coding, if date crosses over September 1st, you're allowing TradeStation to do that. Now, if you want access to an Excel spreadsheet with a version of this seasonal code that allows you to optimize for getting into a trade before before and after a specific date, as well as being able to optimize how long to stay in that trade, just shoot me an email insight at peaktradingresearch.com and I will send that over to you. For our next strategy entry, let's use the day of the week to trade. For example, let's always go long on Wednesdays. What this strategy does is it says if the day of the week is day number two, that's Tuesday, then buy the next bar at market, that's Wednesday. And if the date of the week is number three, that's Wednesday, set the exit on close. So another way to say that is get in on the open on Wednesday, get out at the close on Wednesday. And if we add this strategy to a soybean daily bar chart, we can see how this strategy works. The strategy is buying the open on Wednesdays. It's getting out on the close on Wednesdays. Now this strategy worked really well in 2021 and early 2022 when energy markets were rallying. You had generally bullish statistics from the Department of Energy released on Wednesdays. So Wednesday was generally a good day of the week to be long soybean futures. For our next strategy entry, we're going to be incorporating an external data set to trade. Now, this external data set can be anything that has a date and a value. For example, it could be the rainfall in Iowa for the past 10 years. It could be the value of cash French wheat for the past 10 years, or as one 
one of my favorite indicators. We can use the commitment of traders, the COT report, net hedge fund position for a specific market. This could help us determine if hedge funds, the speculators in commodity markets, are extended short or they're extended long in a particular market. So this is what our strategy entry code that incorporates an external data set looks like. For example, we will look at a situation in which the hedge fund net long position, the hedge fund non-commercial net position is above a value of 20,000 contracts short. In that case, we are going to look to sell short the next bar at the lowest low of the past two bars stop. We're going to look to sell downward momentum if we're above that threshold. Now, TradeStation has this non-commercial net position as a code that we can simply enter like this. And to make this a realistic, complete strategy, we'll simply add a line of code that says we will get out if bar sense entry is greater than 10 bars. We can now add this external data set strategy to a wheat daily bar chart in TradeStation. And we can see what the strategy is doing. It is going short on lower momentum only if the non-commercial position is above a certain threshold. So if hedge funds are extended long in wheat, then and only then will the system start trying to sell front month wheat futures for a profit. Now, incorporating an external data set to trade, especially if that data set is based on a fundamental value, something like the cash value of a commodity or a supply and demand balance sheet, value or a weather value that is increasingly being called quantum mentals trading. That is using a fundamental value as a threshold or a prerequisite for establishing a quantitative trading position. If you work for a commodity hedge fund or a big commodity trading house, you need to be familiar with this style of quantum mentals trading. Our next strategy entry is a moving average crossover entry, and it's the first time that we'll be using variables to establish a trading position. A strategy variable is a dynamic value or an equation that we can easily reference later in our strategy and keep the strategy more simple. In this case, we'll be defining our moving average short variable as the average close of a short length and our moving average long variable as the average close of a longer length length. If the shorter moving average crosses over the longer moving average, then buy next bar at market and vice versa. If the shorter moving average crosses under the longer moving average, then sell short next bar at market. And now we can look at what this strategy looks like on a heating oil daily bar chart. We can also add those moving average lines to our chart to really see when they cross over. We can see what the strategy is doing. When the short-term moving average crosses below the long-term, the strategy gets short. And when the short-term crosses up through the long-term, the strategy gets long. And if we look at a performance report, that's not too bad for a simple moving average crossover strategy that is always in the market. This moving average crossover approach has done pretty well given the big market swings that we've seen in heating oil futures over the past two years. So we've walked through nine exceptional systematic strategy entries. It's time to look at the GOAT, the greatest of all time strategy entry. This is a simple breakout entry that works well across a lot of different markets, especially breakout commodity markets like crude oil, heating oil, gasoline, soybeans, soybean meal, lean hogs, gold, and silver. So let's look at our GOAT breakout strategy code. There it is. This is the greatest of all time strategy entries. It's a simple stop breakout. It is buying the next bar at the highest high of the past 10 bars on a stop, and it is selling short the next bar at the lowest lows of the past 10 bars on a stop. Now you'll often hear traders talk about stopping out 
out of a position, this strategy stops you into a position, meaning if the price prints at or above the highest high of the past 10 bars, this strategy will enter immediately. It will not wait to execute at the next bar at market. It will execute immediately. And if we add our GOAT breakout strategy to a gasoline 240 minute bar chart, we can get a real sense for how this strategy trades. If the market is breaking lower and sees the lowest level of the past 10 bars, it stops into a short position. It gets in immediately. And if the market is turning higher and prints the highest level of the past 10 bars, the strategy will stop into a long position immediately. We can see that this breakout strategy has done a very nice job of catching some of the big swings that we've seen in gasoline futures recently. And if we look at a longer term performance chart, look at that. That is a nice upward sloping equity curve. This approach of buying higher highs and selling lower lows with stops has worked exceptionally well over the past decade in gasoline futures. You now have 10 great strategy entries that you can use over and over again to develop some really exceptional systematic trading strategies. Even more complicated systematic trading strategies with dozens of lines of code and different filters and variables and exits often rely on these very simple strategy entries as the foundation. So now let's move on to strategy exits. In our last session, we talked about the 10 greatest strategy entries, and now it's time to cover the 10 greatest strategy exits. Every trading strategy has those two important building blocks, entries and exits. Exits are often overlooked, but they are just as important as strategy entries. Great exits can help you manage risk. They can help you lock in profits, and overall, they can make you a better, more confident trader. So the 10 greatest strategy exits exits, let's look at the list. As always, we'll be looking at some easy language strategy code, but focus less on the code itself and more on the strategy logic. That way, if you're using another coding language like Python or C++ or R, or you're doing your work in Microsoft Excel, you can still use these exits. So let's get started. Let's look at the greatest of all time strategy exits, starting with exit number 10. For the first exit that will be looking at, this is a system where your entry is the same as your exit. This is a complete trading system that is always long or short. The way this strategy works is if the market close is the highest close of the last six bars, then the system will buy the next bar at market and vice versa. If the close is the lowest close of the past six bars, the system will sell short next bar at market. And again, it's a complete system. The system is always long or short. It's always in the market. And we can see what this looks like if we add this strategy to a heating oil 240 minute bar chart. The system does a nice job of selling short on downward momentum and buying upward momentum, selling short on downward momentum. If we look at a strategy performance report, the system has done fairly well over the past year for just two lines of code always in the market. This run up here is Russia's invasion of Ukraine where we saw a lot of volatility and a lot of big breakout moves in heating oil futures. For our next trading exit, we'll just look at a simple stop loss. This is the simplest of all exits and it's a good way to manage risk. What this exit does is it says if the system is at any point losing $5,000 per contract, just exit the position, exit the position immediately. And if we add this stop loss exit to our goat stop breakout entry that we worked on in our video on strategy entries, we can see what this looks like on a chart. Again, the strategy is going short on lower momentum. It's buying up 
backward momentum, but we can see that once in a while, it's hitting a stop loss. And this brings up an important question. Do you need a stop loss? Does your system need to have a stop loss? Not necessarily. You can build systems that are always long or short, that are always in the market, that are always waiting for that next trading signal in the opposite direction to get out of a trade. A stop loss will generally help you sleep better at night. It's just a nice way to know that if things really go wrong, you're going to get out of a position. So bottom line, even if adding a stop loss maybe doesn't improve the backward looking equity curve of your trading system, you should still consider adding a stop loss. It's good, simple risk management, and it makes your trading system more realistic, more tradable. For our next trading exit, we have a simple profit target like a stop loss. This is a simple line of code that will take profit on a position if the total gain is more than $10,000. And if we add our profit target to our GOAT entry and add it to a heating oil 240 minute bar chart, we can see how a profit target works. The system will sell short, hits a profit target, go short again, hit another profit target, and so on. Now you might ask, why add a profit target to a trading system? Why not just let your winners always run? There are two reasons for this. The first reason is if you look at an equity curve going back through time, you'll often find one or two or three really big gains that make up most of the profits over the course of the past 10 years. Meaning the trading system happened to catch a few big volatile moves like the financial crisis or the COVID washout or Russia invading Ukraine. And you don't necessarily want to rely on a system that plays for those types of events in the future that you may not catch. And adding a profit target limits the impact of those one-off macro events. The second reason is adding a profit target just makes your system more realistic. If your system usually makes gains of a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars per contract and all of a sudden you find yourself sitting on a gain of five or six or seven thousand dollars per contract, realistically you will probably take profit on that position. We all want to say that we're systematic traders and that we'll always let our systems run but realistically if you're sitting on a big gain you'll probably take those chips off the table. Why not code that in? Why not code in a profit target? Our next trading exit is a simple profit target that executes on the next bar at market. There's nothing really groundbreaking here. The only difference is that if your max position profit is greater than your profit target, $4,000 per contract, $5,000 per contract, $6,000 per contract, the system will then exit at the next bar at market. It'll either sell or buy to cover on the next market bar. An advantage of this approach is that you can take advantage of the liquidity on the next market open if you're a larger trader or if you just want to execute trades once a day. If you've built your system to always execute next bar at market, you can use an entry that enters next bar at market with this exit that always executes next bar at market. Our next exit is a simple trailing take profit exit. This is a a great exit. What this code is doing is it's saying if the max position profit, so the most money that we've ever made on a position minus the open position profit, so the current profit that we have at this minute is greater than 2000. So if you've made $10,000 at some point and all of a sudden you're down to only $7,500, that's greater than 2000. This system will begin to exit. It will sell next bar at market or it will buy to cover next bar at market. And if we combine this with our GOAT breakout entry, we can see what this looks like on a heating oil 240 minute bar chart. The system went long on upward momentum and then starts to lose some money so gets out of the position. The spread between the most money the system has made and the current money that the system has made is greater than that threshold so the system exits. Our next exit is a protect profit ratio. This is a similar idea to our trailing stop but it's phrased a little bit differently here. If the max position profit is greater than a threshold of $5,000 per contract, the system is long and the open position profit 
profit over the max position profit is less than 0.5. So if you've given back 50% of your gains, then get out of a position, vice versa, if the market position is short. If we add this to a heating oil 240 minute bar chart, again, we can see how this works. The system went short here on lower momentum, was making good money. Then the system got above that profit threshold. The market started to revert higher and the system gets out. Same thing happened here. System went short, market starts to revert higher, and the system gets out because of this exit. All right, our next exit is a quick spike profit exit. What this exit does is it says if your market position is greater than zero, if you are long, you're selling the next bar at the close plus 3%. And if your market position is less than zero, if you're short, you're buying to cover at the next bar minus 3%. And if we look at what this exit looks like on a chart, we can see that when you have a big move quickly in your favor. So if you're short and the market market spikes lower or you're long and the market spikes quickly higher, you are going to exit immediately. Our next exit is an ATR stop. What this code does is it says if you are long and the market starts moving against your position lower as defined by this average true range over the past 10 bars times two, you want to stop out of your position. Vice versa, if you're short, you want to buy to cover if the market starts starts moving higher by this ATR times two value. So effectively, if you're long and the market starts dropping, you hop out. If you're short and the market starts rising, you also hop out of your position. And if we add this to a heating oil 240 minute bar chart, we can see how this works. Here you've established a short position, the market starts moving higher, you stop out, you get into a short position again when momentum starts breaking lower, it's a successful trade. Same thing here, you get short, it's a successful trade. Same thing here, short, successful trade. Now you're short and the market starts moving against you, so you stop out. It's a nice way to avoid getting short into an overly uptrending market. Two more exits to go. This is our reverse exit, reverse after X bars. So if the bars sense entry is greater than 10, if you've been in for 10 bars and you are long, then you want to go short the next bar on the open. And if the bar sense entry is greater than 10 and you are short, then you want to buy the next bar on the open. Effectively, after 10 bars, you want to switch directions. Now, this approach will generally work well on more mean reverting markets, a market like cocoa or coffee or nat gas, a market that you already know tends to trade in a sideways pattern. This generally will not work too well in markets that continue to break out because after a certain amount of time, you're trading against momentum for longer trends. So what this looks like on a chart, we can see here we're buying upward momentum via our our GOAT entry, our GOAT breakout entry. After 10 bars, we're then getting short. Here we are getting short again. And then after 10 bars, we are getting long. You can see it kind of trades in these up, down, up, down patterns, reversing the position every 10 bars. Now it's time. I know you're as excited as I am. Let's look at the GOAT, the greatest of all time trading exit. And there it is, exit number one, exit after a certain number of bars. This is a time-based exit. Effectively, if your bars sense entry is greater or equal to 20, so if you've been in for 20 bars, just get out. If you're long, you sell next bar at market. If you're short, you buy to cover next bar at market. In fact, we can even clean this up a bit and make this one simple line of code. Now, if we add our GOAT stop breakout entry, as always, we can see what this looks like on a chart. No surprise, our GOAT entry gets us long on momentum. We get out after 20 bars. Again, our GOAT entry gets us long on upward momentum and we are gonna get out after 20 bars. So when there's no other signal, the system will always exit after a certain amount of
of time, in this case, 20, 240 minute bars. Now this might be a controversial pick for the greatest of all time exit. Maybe you like that trailing stop because it helps lock in profits. Maybe you like that reverse exit because if you think a trend is over, why not reverse and take the other direction? But believe me, you will find yourself using this bar sense entry exit all the time. It's simple, it's easy to test, and trends only last so long. It makes sense to strongly consider using a time-based exit. And keep in mind, you can layer on different exits. It's very common to see a strategy have two or three or four different exits. You can have a stop loss, a take profit, a trailing stop, and a bar sense entry exit all in the same strategy. So you now have 10 great exits in addition to your 10 great strategy entries, you can build, analyze, test, and trade thousands of different systematic strategies. And in our next session, we are going to look at building some real systematic trading strategies using some of these simple building blocks. So on to the next session, let's build some strategies. In our last two sessions, we looked at great strategy entries and great strategy exits. And now we're gonna combine them. We're gonna combine our entries with our exits to take a look at some simple but robust trading strategies across a diversified basket of commodity futures. Let's start this process by running some tests. We're gonna start by testing five of our simple great entries, our simple breakout, our simple mean reversion, our low volume reversal, dueling momentum and the GOAT, the greatest of all time stop breakout strategy entry. And we'll test those strategy entries using all 10 of our greatest strategy exits. We'll take those five strategy entries and 10 strategy exits, test them across 120 different bar sizes ranging from 30 minutes all the way up to daily bars and test all that across the 25 most liquid US commodity markets. So overall, we're going to run 1.5 million an optimization test to find some simple, robust, systematic trading strategies that combine our great strategy entries and great strategy exits. And I'll mention that this strategy that we use to test all these different exit and entry combinations is our peak opus strategy. And you can find the full code for this opus strategy in the course packet available at peakalgo.com. So let's jump into it. Let's look at some system strategy code written in the easy language coding language. Let's look at how these systems trade on a chart. And then finally, let's look at some profit statistics for each of these five simple, robust, systematic trading strategies. Our first strategy is a simple breakout strategy on lean hog 240 minute bars. What this strategy is doing is if the close of one of these lean hog 240 minute bars is the highest close of the last 50, then the system will buy the next bar at market and vice versa. If the close is the lowest close of the last 50 bars, the system will sell short next bar at market. And for the exit, we're using the reverse after a certain number of bars exit. So if there's no other trading signal and the system is long, it goes short. And if there's no other trading signal and the system is short, then it goes long. And of course, one of the big advantages of this being a systematic trading strategy, we can simply add this trading system to a lean hog 240 minute bar chart to really get a sense for how the strategy works. We can see the system is buying higher highs, it's selling short lower lows. And in the absence of a system, System, the system will simply reverse, go long, reverse, go short, reverse, go long, reverse, go short. So it will buy breakouts, sell breakouts, and then trade reversals if there's no other signal. And if we look at a strategy performance report, we see a nice upward sloping equity curve. This trading system has generated positive profits of about $110,000 over the past 11 years, running from 2010 to the end of 2020. 21, and that includes the realistic costs of slippage and broker's commission. We jump into a performance summary. There it is, total net profit, $110,000 with a profit.
profit factor of 2.23. This is a good trading system. Our next trading system is a simple mean reversion strategy on Coco Daily Bars. What this system does is it says if the close of the Coco market is the highest close of the last 35 days, then sell short next bar at market. And if the close is the lowest close of the last 35 days, then buy next bar at market. It's a mean reversion system. It's selling short higher highs and it's buying lower lows. And there's a quick spike profit exit. If the system is long and the market spikes higher by 5%, the system exits. And if the system is short and the market falls by 5%, the system exits. Let's take a look at what this system looks like on a chart using Coco Daily Bars. We can see that this system is doing what we expected. It is selling short higher highs. It is buying lower lows. It is generally mean reversion trading in a pretty tight channel. Coco is the world's number one mean reverting commodity market. So we would expect that a mean reversion strategy like this would perform pretty well. Let's look at a strategy performance report. There we go. That's a nice upward sloping equity curve. This mean reversion approach to trading Coco futures has worked well over the past 11 years up to 2022. And if we look at a performance summary, there we go. $60,000 in profit, 56,000 to be exact with the profit factor of 2.37. Again, another good trading system considering we're just using a few lines of code and a simple mean reversion trading approach. Our next trading system is a low volume reversal on silver daily bars. What this system does is it says if volume is lower than average and the close is the lowest close, of the last 35 days, then buy silver futures next open at market. And if volume is low and the close is the highest close of the last 35 days, then sell short silver futures next day at market. And for the strategy exit, there is no specific exit. Your entry acts as your exit. What this means is that the system is always long or short. The only time it exits a position is when it receives a trading signal in the opposite direction. And if we add our trading system to a silver daily bar chart, we can see how this system works. The system is buying lower closes and selling short higher closes as long as volume is dropping. And again, what we'll notice is because there's no explicit exit, your entry acts as an exit. The system is always long or short. The system always has a position in the market. And if we bring up a performance report, there we go. Another nice upward sloping equity curve. This trading system has made $267,000 over the past 11 years including the realistic costs of slippage and brokerage commission with a profit factor of 4.19. Again, not a bad system considering it's only a few lines of code and it's always in the market. It is always trading silver futures. Our fourth trading system is a dueling momentum trading system on copper 360 minute bars. What the system does is it says if the recent market close is above the close, from 50 bars ago, but it's also below the close from 100 bars ago, then buy next bar at market and vice versa. If the close is below the close 50 bars ago, but above the close 100 bars ago, then sell short next bar at market. Basically, if short term momentum is higher, but long term momentum is lower than buy. And if short term momentum is lower, but long term momentum is higher then sell short. This trading system also has the GOAT, the great greatest of all time strategy exit. It's that exit after X bars. So if 50 bars have passed, if 50 360 minute bars have passed and there's no other trading signal, simply hop out of the position. And if we add our dueling momentum trading system to a copper 360 minute chart, we can see how the system works. If short term momentum starts to turn higher against long term momentum, the system buys. There's no 
other signal, so the system gets out after 50 bars. Vice versa, you have momentum turning lower here, so the system sells short, there's no other signal, so the system buys to cover here. And if we look at a strategy performance report, there we go, another nice upward sloping equity curve. This system has made $122,000 per single contract copper traded over the past 11 years, including the realistic cost of slippage and commission with a profit factor of 1.7, another good trading system. And for our fifth and final trading system, there it is, the GOAT, the greatest of all time strategy entry. It's a stop breakout system on cotton daily bars, how the system works. It says if we are seeing the highest high of the last 45 days, then buy on a stop. And if we see the lowest low of the past 45 days, then sell short on a stop. And this system also has a simple profit target next bar at market exit. So if the max position profit on any trade is over $6,750, then get out of the position, either sell next bar at market or buy to cover next bar at market. And if we add this strategy to a cotton daily bar chart, we can get a sense for how it works. The strategy is selling short breaks lower, it is buying breaks higher, and it has a simple profit target. Looking at a strategy performance report, we see another nice upward sloping equity curve. This system has made $90,000 over the past 11 years up to 2022 with a profit factor of 2.72. Another good trading system considering it's just a few lines of code. So there it is. You have five great robust systematic trading strategies based on our five greatest strategy entries and five great strategy exits. You've got a simple breakout system in lean hogs, a mean reversion system in cocoa, a low volume reversal in silver, dueling momentum in copper, and the GOAT, the greatest of all time stop breakout trading system in cotton. Now, are these perfect strategies? No, there's no such thing as a perfect trading strategy, but hopefully these give you a sense for the type of robust systematic strategies that you can build with simple building blocks. And the full strategy code for all five of these great trading systems, as well as the Opus code that we use to test all of these entry and exit combinations is available in the course packet at peakalgo.com. And now that we have some good robust strategies, let's talk about the best way to turn a good strategy into a great strategy, and that is using filters. You can turn good systematic trading strategies into great systematic trading strategies. Let's back up for a second. In our last three sessions, we looked at great strategy entries and great strategy exits. We then combined those entries and exits to build simple, profitable, robust, systematic trading strategies across lean hogs, cocoa, silver, copper, and cotton. But what's the next step? How can we turn good systematic trading strategies into great systematic trading strategies? Strategies that look more like real hedge fund caliber trading systems and have a much better chance of generating big trading profits in real time. You can do all this with entry filters. Today we'll talk about how these filters work and I'll demonstrate how you can implement them into any systematic trading strategy. When you have a very basic trading system, for example, a breakout system or a mean reversion system or a momentum trading system, you are following a very simple set of rules. For example, with a simple breakout system, you are buying higher highs and selling short lower lows with the hope that on a long enough timeline, that's a profitable trading approach. But maybe that's not always the right approach. Maybe there are certain scenarios in which you don't want to buy higher highs and don't 
don't want to sell short lower lows? What if you could find out what those bad situations are? What if you could use filters to weed out those bad trading setups? For example, maybe your simple breakout system shouldn't be trying to buy higher highs if it's a Friday or if it's before 10 in the morning or if trading volumes are dropping or if volatility is increasing. We can test all that. We can use filters to answer the question, should we be avoiding that trading setup? The peak filters that we'll talk about today test hundreds of different market scenarios and price patterns to find what are those situations that you might want to avoid to increase your system's profitability. So you get a sense for what these filters are, how they could help us avoid bad trading setups. Now let's look at a practical example for the heating oil market where we can take a good breakout trading system and turn it into a great breakout trading system. There are four simple steps that we are going to follow. First, we are going to add the peak filter script to our strategy. Next, we are going to test the entry filters. We are then going to permanently move the filters into our strategy. And finally, we are going to remove the filter script that we added earlier. So let's jump into TradeStation and look at a very simple breakout strategy for the heating oil market on 240 minute bars. What this strategy does is it buys higher highs looking back at the last 50 bars and it sells short lower lows looking also back at the last 50 bars. The strategy then exits so it either sells the position or buys to cover that heating oil position using a slightly different length, a shorter length of only 15 bars. There's also a profit profit target of $3,000 per contract and a stop loss of a fifth of that $3,000 per contract, so $600 per contract. And if we look at some performance statistics, we can see a nice upward sloping equity curve. So cumulative profits have accrued nicely over time with very few drawdowns. And this system has made about $128,000, including slippage and including commission costs over the past 10 years. So we know we're starting with a pretty good breakout strategy in heating oil. Now let's add the peak filter script so that we can start testing which of those filters we ultimately want to add to the strategy to make it even better. So this is what the peak filter script looks like that we'll be adding to our strategy. What we're going to do is take this simple script and wrap it around the very first entry that we want to test. So to do that, we simply copy the script, we paste it into our strategy to wrap it around the very first entry and now we confirm and we are good to go. We can now test different entry filters on that first entry. Now you'll see in our strategy we have a new input called the filter input. What we're going to do is we are going to optimize that new input with a value from 1 to 500 to see which of those price patterns or market scenarios we should best be avoiding in our strategy. Our optimization is now done running. If we look at our optimization report and sort by net profit, we can see that the two best filters are number 141 and number 91. So we've run our optimization test across hundreds of different market scenarios and price patterns. And it tells us that number 91 and number 141 are the filters that work best. Those are the market scenarios that we want to avoid to improve the performance of our strategy. So let's move on to step number three. Let's find those filters, look at what they are and move them permanently into our breakout strategy code. We now want to find the strategy code for the filters that we're looking for. So we go to our peak filter function. And remember, we want to look for filter number 91. There it is. If the ADX value is greater than 30, that is a situation that we want our code to avoid. So here we write if ADX greater than 30 equals false. And next we want to look for the other filter that worked well for us. That was number 141. So there it is. This is an up range filter. Again, we simply copy the filter. We paste the actual strategy code into our strategy as a situation we want to avoid. So false. And we tell our script to begin if both of those filters are false. Now, if we confirm our strategy, we can immediately
immediately see the impact that this has on strategy performance. There we go. We can see our equity curve looks even better. This strategy has now made $175,000, including slippage, including commission costs, instead of the $128,000 from just the simple code. We can now repeat this process that we did for the buying entry on the selling short entry. So again, we just wrap our testing script around the sell short entry. We confirm our strategy and we're going to optimize that same filter value from a value of one to 500 to test those 500 different market scenarios and price patterns. Our optimization is now done running. Same process as before. We take the filters that performed best and we simply paste those filters from the function into our strategy and confirm that strategy. Now, if we jump back into a strategy performance report, we can see that performance continues to improve. Those filters are working. We now have an even better equity curve, now making a little over $180,000 over the past 10 years. Now for step number four, we can jump back into our strategy and remove the filter script that we had added earlier, just to clean things up a little bit. If we confirm our strategy, go we'll look at a strategy performance report, we can see that the strategy is unchanged, right? It's the same performance. So we've now done a good job of cleaning up our strategy to use going forward with those new filters. So we now have what looks like a pretty good systematic trading strategy for the heating oil market. We took a good, simple breakout trading strategy and turned it into a great filtered breakout strategy. This strategy looks like a great profitable hedge fund caliber breakout systematic trading system. This back-tested strategy has made positive profits, including the realistic costs of market slippage and brokerage commissions in 11 of the past 12 years. Now, the big question here is this optimization. Are we over-optimizing our trading system by using these filters and therefore guaranteeing that the strategy will not work very well going forward? And the answer is not really. We're not tweaking the inputs and over optimizing the inputs of the trading system to get that perfect backward looking equity curve. We're not over optimizing inputs. Rather, we're using filters to avoid bad trading setups, situations in which it's just not profitable to establish a trading position. So we end up trading less, but the situations where we do trade are more profitable trading setups, which is a pretty good situation to be in. And something very cool about these filters is that these filters will often work across a lot of different markets. For example, this exact strategy, same code, same input values, same filters also works in heating oil, in gold, in platinum and crude oil. That should give you more confidence that we've truly taken a good breakout trading strategy and turned it into a great breakout strategy, a strategy that works across a lot of different markets. And if you're wondering where you can get this peak filter code, there is a version of our peak filter code available in the strategy package at peakalgo.com and the full peak filter code with hundreds of different market scenarios and price pattern filters is available for annual subscribers at peakalgo.com. So we've taken great strategy entries, great strategy exits. We've combined them to create some simple, robust, profitable, systematic trading strategies. And we've talked about how you can use entry filters to turn those good Good strategies into great strategies. So you have a really good idea how you can build profitable, high quality hedge fund caliber trading systems. Now let's move on and talk about optimization and how we can give our systematic trading strategies the best chance of performing well going forward. 
We've now finished our section on strategy building blocks and we're going to move on to our next section on strategy optimization, incubation, and portfolio construction. Everything that we'll go through in the next few sessions, including the correlation spreadsheet from the section on portfolio construction, as well as all the cheat sheets from the section on best algo markets to trade are available in the course packet at peakalgo.com. And in terms of our overall systematic trading strategy development process, we are going to cover a lot of ground in these next sessions. We'll be talking about testing and optimization, real-time incubation, and portfolio and risk analysis. Let's move on to our next full section, optimization, incubation, and portfolio construction. We've now covered entries, exits, filters, those fundamental building blocks of successful systematic trading strategies. Let's move on and talk about optimization, specifically some of the pitfalls of optimization and the steps that we can take to avoid them. Now, what is optimization? Optimization is changing a trading system to make it more effective, to make it more profitable. And for systematic trading, that means testing the strategies in puts to see if that improves strategy performance. And in the book, Design, Testing, and Optimization of Trading Systems, the author Robert Pardo says, the goal of optimization is to find the values for model parameters that will generate peak trading performance in real time. That's a really important distinction that we're gonna come back to again and again in this session. The goal of optimization is not to create the perfect trading system or the perfect upward sloping equity curve. The goal is to find a set of parameters that best sets your strategy up to perform well and generate profits in real time. Now, how can we do that and what does good optimization look like? If you are using a professional systematic trading platform like TradeStation, MultiCharts, MetaTrader, TradingView, system parameter optimization is always a very straightforward process. If we jump into the TradeStation trading platform, we can look at a simple breakout strategy for the gasoline market. And the first thing we'll notice is that there are four inputs, four parameters at the very top of the strategy that we can optimize. There's a length for buying the market, a length for selling short the market, a stop value, and a bars sense entry exit value. And if we add this trading system to a gasoline daily bar chart, we can see that that this breakout trading system has worked pretty well for the gasoline futures market. It successfully sold short, lower lows. It's been buying higher highs for a profit. And if we look at a strategy performance report, we see a nice upward sloping equity curve. This has generally been a profitable approach to trading the gasoline market. But what if we want to try and improve this strategy performance? What if we want to test if maybe buying the highest close of the last 12 days or 15 days or 20 days could improve our strategy performance. To do that, we'll simply jump into the strategy and we're gonna do this again in TradeStation, but this is the same process regardless of the automated trading platform that you're using. We go to our parameters, our inputs, and we can optimize. For example, we can test this from a value of five to 15 in increments of one, and we can test our other length in increments increments of five from 25 to 75. Our strategy optimization is now done running. If we look at a strategy performance report, we see a nice upward sloping equity curve, a slightly improved equity curve. And if we go to a strategy optimization report, we can see that this report tells us if we sort by net profit that buying an eight day breakout. So buying the highest close of the past eight sessions and selling short the lowest close of the past 75 sessions is actually the best parameters to use. Again, instead of using 10 here, using eight, and instead of using 50 here per our strategy optimization report, using a value of 75. Now that we've done our optimization, the million dollar question, what will be the best parameters to use going forward? Now our optimization test 
class told us that using eight instead of 10 and 75 instead of 50 were the best historical parameters to use, but will those be the best parameter values for peak strategy performance going forward? The answer frustratingly is almost certainly not. That value of eight and 75 will most likely not be the most profitable values to use for the next 10 years. But our strategy optimization report gives us some important clues as to what those most profitable parameters might be. If we jump back into our strategy optimization report sorted by net profit, we see that for our breakout buying entry, so again, that is our if the close is the highest close of length X, we see that that length X value, there are a lot of optimized values of eight, of nine, of 10. And for the selling short side, we see 75, 65 show up quite a bit. Not so much any values that are in the low 50s. So for amending our trading system, we might want to change this length Y value to something around 70, but still keep our length X around 10. Again, our optimization report showed us that eight was the optimized value, but we saw a lot of values that were hanging out around 10. Now that zone where we see the highest optimized profits using a length X value of eight or nine or 10 and a length Y value of 65 or 70 or 75. That is what's called a global maxima. That's the zone that we wanna be in. That's the area that we want to choose our best parameters from. Another way to say that same idea is that's a good neighborhood to be in. If we choose parameter values of 10 and 60 or nine and 75, we're generally gonna have a system that holds up much better going forward than if we were to use parameters from outside that neighborhood, parameters from away from the global maximum. Now, optimization is a great tool, but it comes with a big warning. And that is, it is very easy and very tempting to over-optimize your trading systems. When you add lots of inputs to a trading system, when you optimize those inputs again and again across hundreds or thousands of different optimization runs, you are over optimizing optimizing, you are curve fitting. And whether you intend to or not, you are ensuring that your trading system will not work well going forward. There are real diminishing returns to optimizing your trading systems. And that point where there's no marginal advantage to playing around with your inputs and doing more optimizations is a lot closer than you might think. For a great analogy about optimization and the hazards of over-optimization, let's talk about surfing. If you want to learn to surf and you go to Hawaii or Bali or California, your surfing instructor is gonna set you up with a basic set of rules for how to ride a wave. And on your first day, you go out, you have a great time, you catch a few waves, and at the end of the day, you recall, okay, I caught my best waves at 1219, at 123, and at 249. And if you go out on your second day at exactly those times expecting to catch those same great waves, you are not going to have a very good time. You would be better off following that simple set of rules again and again that your instructor told you. Now, of course, the reason you didn't have a good second day of surfing is you over-optimized. You wrongly assumed that following a very specific set of parameters would give you a better surfing experience than just following following a simple set of rules. Now, this is a great analogy because markets move in waves and you can catch those waves. You can capture those market moves for a profit if you follow a simple set of instructions. Don't let great be the enemy of the good. Don't ruin a good trading system by trying to make it a perfect trading system. So how can you avoid over-optimization? How can you avoid the hazards of curve fitting? First, keep Keep your strategies simple. Your biggest advantage is being able to trade a portfolio of good, uncorrelated, real-time systematic trading strategies. That is such an important point that comes up again and again in this course. I'm gonna say it again. Your biggest advantage as a systematic trader, especially in commodity markets, is being able to trade a 
diversified portfolio of uncorrelated real-time trading systems. So again, spend your time trying to find good trading systems across more markets, especially uncorrelated markets like commodity markets, instead of trying to build that perfect, over-optimized, curve-fitted trading system. The second way to avoid over-optimization is to use more out-of-sample data. Out-of-sample data is data that your strategy has not had access to, historical data that your system has not yet seen. And a popular way to test on out-of-sample data is called walk-forward testing. Now, walk-forward testing is where, for example, you optimize your strategy parameters for a very limited period of time, for example, from 2011 to 2015. Then you see how those parameters perform on a period after that, for example, 2016. You then repeat that process over and over again so that you're constantly seeing if the parameters that you tested for in the past have a predictive value for positive performance in the future. Now, obviously you can do this process manually. You could just load up a very specific window of time in your trading platform, optimize, see how those parameters work on a period after that and repeat that process over and over again. There are also walk forward testing engines in most automated trading platforms. And if you're a TradeStation user, there's a great walk forward testing tool that you can use called MultiOp that you can find at multiop.net. And if you don't wanna go down the full walk forward route, you can also just optimize your parameters on a limited set of data. For example, you can optimize your trading system parameters from 2010 to 2020 and then see how those parameters perform on real-time data, data your strategy has not yet seen from 2020 after. The third and final way to avoid over-optimization is to make sure that your trading system is consistent with your understanding of market participants and how the market moves. For example, if you have a seasonal trading system that sells short corn futures in June or July after that critical production window. When harvest ramps up and farmers start to get more confidence in the final size of their crop and traders remove a risk premium from futures, you do not have as much risk of over-optimizing that trading system. You don't need to add a lot of inputs. You don't need to tweak those inputs. You have the confidence that you understand fundamentally why that trade works. Or maybe you use commitment of trade positioning data to trade or weather or cash basis. The more you understand how a market works and how you can model a trading system around that, the less likely you are to have to over optimize a trading system to get the kind of performance statistics that you want. So putting it all together, optimization is a powerful tool, but that optimization button is the devil's button. It can get you into a lot of trouble. There is always a real risk of over optimization of curve fitting and we can avoid some of those risks by thinking like a surfer by trying to catch waves using a simple set of rules by being smart about how we use out of sample data and finally trying to build our simple systems based on a fundamental understanding of how markets work and remember I'll say it a third time your advantage as a systematic trader is not not in building that one perfect over-optimized trading system. It's in creating a portfolio of diversified, real-time, uncorrelated systematic trading strategies. Some commodity markets are way better to trade than others. Commodity markets all move in very different ways in response to different fundamental and non-fundamental price drivers. And especially if you are a beginner to systematic trading with limited capital or limited risk tolerance, it is very important to know these differences. Some markets are too expensive to trade. They have too much slippage. Some commodity futures contracts are really large futures contracts, so they require 
require a lot of capital and margin to trade. Some contracts are very volatile and have a lot of what's called value at risk. And finally, some commodity markets are way better for breakout trading and some are better for mean reversion trading. So let's talk about quantitatively how we can prove which commodity markets are the best for trading and why, for example, you might want to avoid trading markets like palladium and gold and favor trading markets like sugar and platinum. What are the best commodity markets to trade? Let's start by talking about slippage. Slippage is the cost of executing a futures trade. When you trade commodity futures, there is always a bid ask spread. There's always a cost to executing that trade. And every commodity market is different. Every market has a different amount of slippage, a different cost you're going to pay to execute a trade. And most of that has to do with liquidity. Really liquid markets have low slippage. Really illiquid markets with fewer participants, less volume traded have very high slippage, a very high cost to trade. For example, illiquid markets like lumber or orange juice or palladium or rice have very few participants, not a lot of volume, a large amount of slippage. You're going to pay a lot to execute a trade. But bigger markets like gold, platinum, copper, crude oil have a lot of market participants, a lot of liquidity, a low amount of slippage, a low cost to trade. So it follows that when you include the cost of slippage in your system development, which you always should include, you are going to find it easier to build systems for those more liquid markets. This is one of my personal biggest pet peeves with strategy development is when I see traders, traders not including those costs of slippage and commissions when they are building strategies, testing strategies, sharing strategies via email or YouTube. At Peak Trading Research, we will always include those costs of slippage and commissions because you cannot avoid those costs. They are a realistic part of trading. If your system doesn't look good when you include slippage and commission costs, guess what? You should not be trading that system. It will not make money for you in real time. Every system that we build on this channel, on the Peak Trading Research channel, will always include slippage and commission costs. For example, from our strategy of the month videos, including the realistic costs of slippage and commissions, including the realistic costs of slippage and commissions. And that includes, most importantly, includes the realistic costs of slippage and commissions. You get the idea. Always include slippage and commission costs when you are developing strategies. So in terms of slippage and liquidity, what are those best markets to trade and what are those markets to avoid? If we take a chart and we model on the y-axis, the volatility of a futures contract, and on the x-axis, we model the slippage as a percentage of notional, so the cost of executing a futures trade, we can see very clearly that there are some markets that are liquid and volatile. Those fall into that nice green zone in the upper left. There are other markets that are more illiquid and stable. They fall into the bottom right part of the chart. Generally speaking, you are going to have an easier time developing profitable systematic trading strategies, especially breakout and momentum trading strategies for the markets that fall into that nice green zone. The markets in that green zone, they are volatile. They are also liquid. There's a low cost to execute trades, a low amount of slippage, meaning you are getting the best bang for the buck. You are not going to pay a lot of slippage, but you're going to get a lot of volatility, big moves that you can profit from. Now, this idea that some markets are very volatile and better for breakout trading, some are less volatile and better for mean reversion trading. That's a concept we are going to come back to later in this section. This means that just in terms of slippage and volatility, you are likely going to be favoring markets like nat gas, heating oil, gasoline, coffee, platinum, sugar, soybean oil. What are the best commodity markets to trade? Let's talk about contract size. Commodity contracts all have different notional dollar values and those values are always changing depending on the value of the underlying commodity. For example, 
example for gold, every gold futures contract references the delivery of 100 troy ounces. And one ounce of gold is worth $2,000. So 100 ounces, $2,000 an ounce. Every futures contract of gold is worth $200,000. That is a big contract, which means you are going to need to have a big trading account that's able to post a big amount of initial and maintenance margin. On the flip side, a contract of sugar or cocoa or nat gas is worth about $20,000. So about a tenth the value of a contract of gold. So as you can see, there are some big differences here. So whether you are a beginner and have a smaller trading account or a limited amount of capital, or you are a professional CTA portfolio manager, and you have in the back of your head that trading one contract of gold is pretty much the same notional exposure as trading 10 contracts of oats or cocoa it is very important to know these differences. Now that is notional dollar value. But what about risk. What if you have a very big contract that has low volatility or a very small contract that has very high volatility? How do you adjust for that? How do you account for the differences in risk? A really good way to do that is to look at dollar standard deviation or value at risk, what's called VAR. Now, before peak trading research, I was a professional commodity trader for Cargill, one of the world's largest commercial grain trading companies. I've also traded for a few different hedge funds and my risk has never been measured in number of contracts or notional value. It's always been measured in VAR, value at risk. Basically, what is my dollar notional exposure times the standard deviation of that asset, of that commodity future? And if we were to list commodity futures in terms of VAR, in terms of contract risk, so no value times standard deviation, we can see that some contracts have huge risk, palladium, heating oil, gasoline. These are markets that not only have a big notional contract, but a lot of volatility. And of course, other markets are way at the bottom of the scale. Markets like cattle, corn, rice, cocoa, lower notional values, lower risk. So especially when you make that transition from system building and system testing into live live trading, you need to know these differences. You need to know that some contracts are bigger than others, require more capital and more margin to trade. Some are more volatile than others. And those bigger, more volatile contracts could have an outsized influence on the value of your portfolio. And you might want to trade five or six or seven contracts of cattle for every contract of gasoline that you're trading in another system. And finally, what are the best commodity markets to trade depending on the type of trading system that you want to run. Some commodity markets are much better for breakout trading, for momentum trading, and others are much better for mean reversion trading, for range trading. Now, how can we know which markets are better for breakouts, which are better for mean reversion? We have already seen a really good clue when we looked at that chart with volatility versus slippage. Some markets Markets like nat gas and heating oil, gasoline are, are very volatile. They are going to be great markets to build breakout and momentum trading systems. Other markets like cocoa, feeder cattle, rough rice, live cattle, they are more stable. They're going to be great for mean reversion and range trading. Now there is another great way to prove out this concept that some markets are great for breakout trading, some are great for mean reversion trading, and that is we can test some systems. We can test breakout systems. We can test mean reversion systems. And we can look at the math. We can quantitatively see in which markets should we be breakout trading and in which markets should we be mean reversion trading. To run this analysis to see which markets are the best for breakout trading or mean reversion trading, we tested 85 different bar sizes from 30 minutes up to daily bars. We tested the 
the 25 major US futures markets and we ran 1500 different optimization runs on each of those bar sizes and futures markets. That is a total of 3.2 million optimization tests. What were the results of testing those simple breakout and mean reversion commodity trading strategies? Markets like gasoline, sugar, heating oil, and lean hogs are great for breakout trading, whereas markets like rice, coffee, live cattle, and cocoa are better for mean reversion trading. And very big picture, we can also see that there are more markets that are breakout markets. In general, commodity markets tend to work well for breakout trading. There are very few markets, only a handful that are great for mean reversion and range trading. Now, this is great because we've confirmed both by looking at slippage and volatility and also by running millions of optimization tests that we can see there are quantitatively some markets that are truly better for breakout trading and others that are better for mean reversion trading. You might say, Dave, I know we've done a lot of strategy building and testing in this course, but remind me what is a breakout strategy and what is a mean reversion strategy? Let's quickly look at a breakout strategy for the heating oil market and a mean reversion strategy for the rice market. If we jump into the trade station trading platform, we can look at a great example of a breakout strategy for the heating oil market. This trading system at its core is buying higher highs and it is selling short lower lows. It is a breakout strategy and because it's a systematic trading strategy, we can add it to a heating oil 180 minute bar chart. We can see how the strategy acts. It is buying upward momentum, selling short downward momentum, selling short downward momentum. And this has been a pretty good approach to trading heating oil futures. This trading system has made about $221,000 in profits on a single contract of heating oil traded, of course, including the realistic costs of slippage and commissions. And now let's look at a mean reversion system for the rice market. What this trading system is doing is it is buying lower closes and it is selling short higher closes. It is doing the opposite of our heating oil breakout strategy. Instead of buying higher highs, it is selling short higher highs. And again, because it's a systematic trading strategy, we can see how this system behaves on a rough rice daily bar chart. It is selling highs. It's getting short at higher levels and it is buying lows. It is buying lower levels. It's basically mean reversion trading. And if we look at a strategy performance report, there we go another nice upward sloping equity curve. This trading system has made about $63,000 per single contract of rough rice traded since 20 10, of course, including slippage and commission costs. To wrap up this section, let's back up and review what we've talked about. Some commodity markets are much better than others for trading. We can base that conclusion on the size of the contract, the risk of the contract, the bang for the buck that you get. So the volatility in terms of slippage, that cost to trade. And some markets are way better for breakout trading, like plastic platinum, heating oil, gasoline, and some markets are much better for mean reversion trading like cocoa, like that rough rice trading system we went through. So overall, hopefully this gives you a structured and quantitative way to think about what are the best markets for trading in terms of slippage, contract size, risk, and finally, in which markets is it better to do breakout or mean reversion trading. You've built your trading system, you've tested entries and exits and filters, you've optimized the inputs in that trading system, you have confidence that that trading approach can work well going forward. It is now time to incubate your strategy. What is incubation? Incubation is seeing how your systematic trading approach works in real time on new unseen data. It is putting your strategy in a drawer, putting it aside for six months, 
months, nine months, 12 months, then revisiting it at a later time to see how it's done. Now, incubation is easy. You simply lock in all your inputs. You don't touch your strategy. You don't change anything about it and you just see how it performs going forward. For a practical example on an equity curve of what this looks like, here is a strategy that was developed using data from 2010 until 2018. It was then evaluated on new data from 2018 to 2020. And then the strategy has been incubating since 2020. Incubation is important because everything that you have done up until this point, up until today is optimization. It is curve fitting. Changing the inputs in your strategy to try and get better performance statistics or an even better upward sloping equity curve is optimization. Choosing which filters to use in your strategy is optimization. Walk forward analysis, even though it does include some out of sample data, is optimization. Even choosing which strategies to run is optimization. There is no better way to avoid those hazards of over optimization that are just a natural part of every step of a strategy's development process than to incubate your strategy. And believe me, I know how frustrating it is, especially when you're new to systematic trading, to sit on that strategy and incubate it or paper trade it for three months, six months, nine months, 12 months to get the confidence that it's a strategy that could make money in real time. Now, the good news about incubation is that sometimes the incubation is done for you. For example, if you find a trading system from a book that was written years ago, or you look at one of our strategy of the month videos from our Peak Trading Research YouTube channel. Anything that's after that date of publication is incubation. It is out of sample strategy performance. And incubation is so important that it is one of the core principles behind our Peak 10 strategy list at peakalgo.com. Every month we share with our clients real fully coded systematic trading strategies that have been incubating for a minimum of six months because again, real time out of sample performance is the gold standard by which you should evaluate a trading system. Now, how long do you need to incubate a strategy? Obviously the longer the better, but a minimum of six months. If you've been incubating a strategy for two years, three years, five years, that gives you the confidence that this strategy has real edge. It is not just a fluke that that strategy is generating real profits. So bottom line, incubate your trading strategies. It will save you a lot of headaches, a lot of heartbreaks, and it will genuinely improve your systematic trading performance. We've talked about entries, exits, filters, the importance of optimization and incubation. So at this point, you have some great strategies that have a good chance of making real profits going forward. And you even know in which markets those strategies will likely work best. Now, how can we put together all of those great strategies into a trading portfolio? After all, as we talked about in our session on optimization, your advantage as a systematic trader is not in building the perfect trading system, but in putting together a portfolio of diversified real-time trading strategies. So let's now talk about the number one tool for analyzing how to put together all of your great trading strategies into a portfolio. And let's talk about the very, very good news for diversification across commodity markets. Why is diversification so important. Strategy diversification, that is trading a basket of diversified systematic trading strategies all at the same time, is important because you are less exposed to the volatility and the drawdowns from any given trading system. We've spent a lot of time in this course looking at equity curves, at those nice cumulative profit lines that show the historical performance of a systematic 
automatic trading strategy. And those equity curves are never a straight line. There is no perfect trading system. You are always going to have some zigs and some zags, sometimes when the system is in tune with the market and times when the system is drawing down. Diversification across many different strategies means that you can smooth out the cumulative equity curve of your portfolio. When you turn on five diversified trading systems, 10 trading systems, 15, 20 trading systems, you will obviously find that your cumulative profits go up because you're taking more risk by adding more systems, but your max drawdowns, the times when you're not making money as a percentage of those returns goes down, meaning your risk adjusted returns go up. You are getting more bang for the buck. And all of those popular risk metrics like your CalMar ratio, return to drawdown, Rena, Sharp, Sortino, information ratio, all of those metrics will improve as you add more systematic trading strategies to your portfolio. What is the number one tool for analyzing and maximizing the diversification benefits of your portfolio and assuring that you're getting the best risk returns? That is a simple correlation matrix. A correlation matrix is a great foundation. It's a powerful tool for you to do your portfolio diversification analysis. We are going to go through an example of a correlation matrix here. If you want access to this full spreadsheet, you can find it in the course packet at peakalgo.com. This correlation table shows the correlation between different systematic trading strategies based on weekly returns over the past 10 years. In this case, these strategies happen to be from one of our peak 10 packages from peakalgo.com from earlier this year. Now, as a reminder, the measure of correlation runs from negative one to positive one. Anything from zero to negative one is negatively correlated. Anything from zero to positive one is positively correlated. Now, as a rule of thumb, a correlation value from zero to 0 0.25 is a weak correlation. A correlation from a value of 0 0.25 to 0 0.75 is a moderate correlation and a correlation value from 0 0.75 to one is a strong correlation. In an ideal world, you would want your correlation table to show a lot of negative correlations, meaning the strategies are all moving in different ways. So jumping back to our correlation table between these different systematic trading strategies, the first thing we'll notice is that we are off to a pretty good start. We don't see a lot of really strong correlations here in this table. There's not a lot of values that are above 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. In fact, the highest correlation is between two breakout strategies in the metal markets, the Ducati strategy for platinum and the break the bank strategy for silver, which are still only 0.29 correlated. That's barely a moderate correlation. And it's interesting to note that the Achilles and non-com trigger strategies, both of which are trading the lean hogs market at LH for the continuous contract, they have a correlation of only 0.09, a very weak correlation right around zero. This correlation matrix tells us that this is a great basket of strategies to trade together. Our correlation matrix tells us that there are not a lot of positively correlated strategies, which means we are getting a lot of diversification benefits from trading all these strategies together. Now, this points to one of the biggest advantages of systematic trading across commodity markets specifically. If we look at the way that commodity markets move, the price action across different commodity markets, we'll see that they are not that correlated. The wheat market moves in a very different way than bean oil, which moves in a very different way than coffee, than lean hogs, than gasoline. These markets are all very unique and respond to a different mix of fundamental and non-fundamental price drivers. Now layer on top of that, that not only do these markets move in very different ways, but we are trading 
creating different systems, looking at different bar sizes, different time frames. So it just makes sense that all of these trading systems will naturally move in very different ways. And that is not the case across all markets. For example, if you were only trading stock markets or you were only trading interest rates or foreign exchange markets, stock markets are way more correlated to one another. For example, the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, the Dow, the NASDAQ all tend to move together. Currency markets generally tend to move together, tend to follow the same macro themes or broad trends in the US dollar. That is not the case with commodity markets and it is a huge advantage for you as a systematic trader. This means that if you are trading commodity markets, diversification is naturally on your side. And my strong opinion here is that it is great to put together a correlation matrix and get a sense that your strategies will be diversified and move in different ways. But don't feel that you need to go much beyond that, that you need to complicate things too much in terms of your diversification and risk analysis. Your time is much better spent testing strategies, incubating strategies versus obsessing over all the minute differences and correlations between your different already diversified strategies. Again, this is a huge advantage of commodity markets is that if you are trading a number of different systems, especially if they're across different markets, diversification is naturally already on your side. Bottom line, diversification is important because it helps the overall risk return profile of your portfolio. A simple correlation matrix, the kind you can find in the course packet at peakalgo.com is your number one tool for assessing the diversification benefits of your portfolio. And finally, if you are trading commodity markets, you are in a very, very good place because there are massive diversification benefits between your different trading systems. We've now finished our section on optimization, incubation, and portfolio construction. It is now time to get started with live trading. In terms of our systematic strategy development process, we are here. We are at the top of the mountain, the top of the strategy development pyramid. So let's move on to our next and final section. Let's get started. This is the big moment. You've built your trading system, you've tested it, you've done some gentle optimization, maybe added some filters, you're comfortable with the risk of the strategy, you've incubated the strategy to see how it performs in real time on new unseen data, and you know how this strategy fits into your overall portfolio. You're now ready to pull the trigger and automate your trading system so that your automated trading platform will execute trades in the market on your behalf. Now, this is a big step. In fact, it's the biggest step because it's the moment that you transition from building and testing strategies into becoming a true algorithmic trader. The good news is that this big step of automating your trading systems is actually very straightforward. Regardless of the automated trading platform that you're using, the automation process process entails three simple steps. Step number one is ensuring that you are set up to trade the correct futures contract. Step number two is pressing the automate button. Step number three is confirming that the position you hold in the market matches your systematic strategy position. Step number three includes rolling your futures contract through time to ensure that you are always trading the correct futures contract. Let's start by looking at practical examples of what this automation process looks like. Now, I'll be walking through these examples in the TradeStation trading platform, but remember that this automation process of mapping the correct contract, pressing the automate button, and confirming that your market position matches your system position is the same
same automation process regardless of the trading platform that you use. To keep things simple, this is what TradeStation looks like right out of the box. So if you've never used TradeStation or another automated trading platform, this is what it looks like when you first open up the platform. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to open up a chart. TradeStation, like most other automated trading platforms, is a chart-based trading platform. In this case, we are going to open up a chart for orange juice, 180 minute bars. Let's start with January 1st, 2010 exchange time 180 minute bars on orange juice and there is our chart now for the next step we are going to add a strategy to this chart we're going to add an orange juice trading strategy to our orange juice 180 minute bar chart so to start let's jump into the trade station development environment and let's open up a new strategy that we are just going to name dueling orange juice. Now we can get rid of this demo text and we can paste in the strategy code for our dueling momentum strategy for the orange juice market. We can now add our dueling orange juice strategy to our chart to add strategy. There's our dueling orange juice strategy, press OK, and our systematic trading strategy for the orange juice market has now been added to our orange juice chart. If we look at a strategy performance report, we should see a nice upward sloping equity curve for this dueling momentum strategy for the orange juice market. Now, of course, importantly, we need to take that step of ensuring that this is a realistic strategy and add the costs of slippage and commissions enable look inside bar testing and let's double check this strategy still looks okay when we include those costs still works still a good strategy for the orange juice market including those realistic costs of slippage and commissions so we have now brought up an orange juice chart we have added our dueling momentum strategy to that orange juice chart to automate this strategy we need to to follow that first important step of ensuring that we're set up to trade the correct orange juice contract. Now remember that all of the strategy building and testing that we have done in this course so far is always on the continuous contract. What is a continuous contract? As a reminder, continuous contract for any commodity futures market is just the knit together history of all the futures contracts that have come before, but it is not a real futures contract. Remember that commodity contracts are always expiring. They only last for a limited period of time, maybe a year or two years. By using a continuous contract, we can do long-term historical analysis and strategy building. To automate our orange juice trading system, we simply need to adjust our chart to not reference the continuous orange juice contract, but rather the active front month orange juice contract. To add the active orange juice contract to our chart, I'm going to follow two different steps. First, I'm going to add the continuous contract as a second security so we can see it on our chart. There we go. There is the continuous contract for orange juice with the same price as the continuous contract above. I am then going to amend that first security so that instead of being the continuous contract, it is the continuous July contract. Now I have a choice here. I can either use the continuous July contract with lots of history going back through time, or I could simply use the front orange juice July contract. In this case, I would only be able to see my strategy performance for as long as this July contract has been around. So I'm going to choose to use the continuous front orange juice July contract. We are now good to go. We have our continuous July orange juice contract loaded on top. We have our 
continuous contract for orange juice loaded on the bottom here. And importantly, those prices are the same. This tells me that we are correctly using the July contract to trade. It matches the price for the continuous contract that we have used for all of our strategy building and testing. And again, as a good double check, I can see there is the same equity curve for this strategy. We have now completed that first important step of ensuring that we are set up to trade the correct front month futures contract in the orange juice market. Let's move on to step two, which is pressing the automate button. Now we'll be looking at this automation process for the trade station trading platform. But again, it's the same process regardless of the the trading platform that you're using. Once you have your price chart, once you have your system loaded on that chart, and once you have the correct contract mapped on that chart, it is always very straightforward in how you can take that next step to automate your trading system regardless of the platform you're using. Let's jump back into TradeStation and take that big step. Let's automate this trading system for the the orange juice market. I'm simply going to go down to the automation section here, generate strategy orders, check it, and I want to automate execution using my account with account confirmation off, meaning I don't want TradeStation to ask me every time I want to execute orders. I want TradeStation to execute orders automatically without confirmation on my behalf. I press OK. We are up and running. This is now a fully automated systematic trading strategy for the orange juice market. We have now taken that big step. We've automated our orange juice trading system. We are systematic trading. Let's now move on to step three and confirm that our market position matches our strategy position. And this is going to be easy in this example because when we automated this trading system, System, it didn't happen to have an open position that should be in the market. Jumping back to our orange juice chart in TradeStation, if we zoom in on the chart, we can see that this system doesn't currently have a position. The system last went long at the beginning of the month, got stopped out last week, and hasn't yet gone long or short orange juice futures. Now, if we jump into a trade manager in Trade station, this is what we're looking for. We can see that our positions match. Our strategy tells us to be flat and our open position in the market, what we actually hold in our brokerage account is also flat, meaning those positions match. But what if that were not the case? What if we had turned on our systematic trading strategy, knowing that the system had either a long or short position in the market that we would have to trade to match. Let's jump into TradeStation and look at a second example of turning on a system where there is currently an active position. There's a silver 360 minute bar chart. This is a breakout strategy for the silver market. If we look at a strategy performance report, we can see that this strategy has performed relatively well over the past decade, including the realistic costs of slippage and commissions. And importantly, if we jump into the chart and zoom in, we can see that this system currently has a short position in silver futures. The system sold this break lower just last week and holds that short position today. I've now added the continuous silver contract to this chart. I've changed this contract one, the tradable contract to the continuous July contract. So we'll be trading July silver futures confirmed that our strategy performance report still looks good. Nice upward sloping equity curve. We are ready to again automate a strategy. Go down to strategy automation, automate executing this account. I agree with account confirmation off. We are again automatically trading silver futures in the market now using this approach. 
We have now automated this trading system on July silver futures, but we know that the strategy has a short position, but we don't yet have a short position in the brokerage account. There it is. Our strategy position is short one contract of July silver futures, but our open position is flat. So to amend this, to fix this, we can simply sell one contract of July silver futures at market. There is a quick trade bar for July silver futures, and we are going to sell one contract at market. And the nice thing about selling that contract is that we have our positions now matched. Strategy position short one, open position short one, we are matched. And if you'd like a deeper dive into creating the perfect trade station desktop for monitoring your positions and profits, you can click our link here for the perfect trade station setup. We've now gone through two examples, both the orange juice trading system that didn't currently have a position and the silver trading system that did have a short silver futures position that both show us that pulling the trigger, automating these trading strategies is actually relatively straightforward. And after we have automated our trading system and made sure that our strategy position matches our market position, all we have to do going forward is make sure that our strategy position continues to match our market position. And that includes rolling contracts through time as different future contracts expire. What does a contract expiring and a contract role look like in TradeStation. At some point in the future, this orange juice continuous contract price will start to reflect September futures price, not the July futures price, because the July contract will start to lose trading volume and it will go off the board, meaning it's just going to expire and lose volume. September will become the more active contract. And at that point, we will see these prices become different. So this 250 and 250, suddenly the continuous contract will be a different price because it's referencing a different new contract. It will start referencing the September price. Now, the good news is, is that because we don't currently have a position in orange juice, if we were to see that change occur today, we would simply amend the front contract to be the September contract instead of the July contract, which is just as easy as changing this to a U instead of an N. And if you need to roll a contract for a system where you do have a market position, for example, that silver trading system that we automated, it's not that much more complicated. You simply need to change the contract on your chart to reflect the new active contract so it matches matches the continuous contract price and you'll need to roll the actual position that you have in the market to match your trading system. So if you are short one contract of July silver futures, you're going to have to buy back that short to cover that short July position and sell one contract of September silver futures. This may sound a little bit complicated, but just think about it as migrating both your your chart and your position from an old contract to a new contract. Now, this is one of the most frustrating parts of systematic trading for commodity futures specifically. Remember, stocks don't have contract roles, ETFs and cryptos don't have contract roles, but this is just a part of futures trading. At least for now, there is no liquid tradable continuous contract. You will have to roll your your contracts through time, both in terms of your chart where your system is automated and in terms of the actual futures positions that you hold in your account. To wrap up this session, it is a big step and a big deal to press that automate button. It represents not only a huge investment in your education and your career, but you are now a systematic trader and that is something to celebrate. You are 
deploying real capital using real futures contracts using an evidence-based systematic approach to trade. In this course, we've talked about building strategies, testing strategies, incubating strategies so that they have the best chance of performing well and generating profits in real time. But that said, strategies can underperform and strategies can break. Experiencing drawdowns and going through periods when you're losing money instead of making money is unfortunately just a realistic part of systematic trading. The good news is is that if you anticipate these drawdowns and you have a game plan in place for what to do when those drawdowns occur, it will help your confidence, it will help you stay in the game, and ultimately it will help your long-term profitability. So when should you turn off a trading system? When is it time to quit? In this session, we'll talk about the three steps that you can take to best anticipate and manage drawdowns when they inevitably occur. Why do strategies break? Strategies can break for a lot of different reasons. Markets change all the time. Market dynamics change around liquidity and trading volumes. Market conditions change around supply and demand and market participants change. For example, in agriculture markets in just the last 10 years, we've seen new government biofuel mandates. We've seen Brazil come online as a massive producer producer of soybeans and corn and sugar. China is now an incredibly important importer of agriculture products. And there's now more money than ever before in quantitative strategies that trade these markets. So a lot has changed across all markets and that definitely applies to commodity markets as well. So a trading approach that worked 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago may not be as relevant. It may not work as well today. And another reason that a strategy might break is just because it's over optimized. All of the strategy inputs and variables and filters are so specifically tuned to a backward looking historical period that it effectively guarantees that the strategy will not work as well going forward. Now we've talked a lot in this course about the importance of incubation. So hopefully you can avoid some of the pitfalls of over optimization. But still, there is a chance that even a well-built strategy, an incubated strategy can break in real time. Now, what does a strategy breaking look like? Let's look at an example from stock markets. In this case, this is a strategy that trades S&P 500 futures based on a few simple criteria. If S&P 500 futures are above the long-term moving average, so if we're still in a bull market, but but short-term momentum is defined by RSI and defined by being below this shorter-term moving average is pointing down, then the system will buy and the system will exit when momentum recovers. So again, long-term bull market, short-term momentum is pointing lower, the system buys and the system then exits when momentum recovers. If we look at a chart, we can see how this system trades. It is buying dips. So it is buying dips whenever the stock market market dips, whenever RSI is low, whenever we're below some short-term moving averages, the system buys and then exits once momentum has recovered. And if we look at a strategy performance report, we see an incredible equity curve, a beautiful upward sloping equity curve on S&P 500 futures for the period from 2009 to 2017. Performance summary, an unbelievable percent profitable, 86% percent profitable. Profitable. So this strategy was performing exceptionally well through the end of 2017. But what if we extend the analysis past the end of 2017? What if we bring it out to today? We can see that pretty much immediately after 2017, right at the beginning of 2018, there was actually an event in the market called Volmageddon. There were a lot of traders that were buying dips, that were selling volatility. A lot of short volatility ETFs got blown up 
and this strategy began to underperform and has never really recovered since. There are a few reasons that I think this is the perfect example of a strategy breaking. First of all, this was a very popular trading approach in 2016 and 2017. There were a lot of hedge funds, a lot of momentum CTAs that were trading some version of this buy the dip RSI S&P trading strategy. Second of all, this strategy was probably over optimized. If you look at a lot of those inputs, they're using very specific values, which suggests that they are optimized to a historical period from 2010 to 2016 or 17 and don't really reflect what could happen going forward. And finally, something just changed in the market. That uptrend with free money, with quantitative easing came to an end. Volatility came back to the market and just absolutely wrecked this system. But it is a great example of a strategy breaking, of a strategy that was doing exceptionally well for a small period of time, but then just absolutely falling apart once the market changed. What are the three steps that you can take to best anticipate and manage strategy drawdowns? Number one is expect that drawdowns will happen. Remember, your maximum drawdown is always ahead of you. There is going to be a point in the future where your strategy underperforms and there might even be a point where that strategy stops working altogether. You should be very pragmatic about the strategies that you trade. You should not fall in love with any given trading system. Remember, there is no perfect trading strategy. And from my own personal experience, the more that I fall in love with a strategy, the more that I'm convinced that this is a strategy that will make me money forever, the higher the probability that it will underperform going forward. Think of your strategies as tools for extracting money from the market. If that tool stops working, stop using that tool. Expect and anticipate that drawdowns will happen. Number two, have a predefined approach and a predefined threshold where you will turn off an underperforming strategy. Don't wait until a strategy is losing money to make that decision and make sure that you can apply that threshold to every strategy that you trade. For example, you do not want to say, well, I'll turn off any of my trading strategies if they lose $2,000 because maybe you have strategies that trade different sized contracts or strategies that have a different percentage success rate or strategies that trade more often than others. Come up with a generalized approach that you can apply to all of your trading strategies. It will make your life a lot easier. The best approach here that you can apply to all of your trading systems is to look at historical drawdowns. When you build a systematic trading strategy, when you're testing a systematic trading strategy, you have that nice historical equity curve. You can look at historical strategy performance. So you can always look at the maximum drawdown, the worst period of underperformance for that strategy historically. So a great threshold for deciding when to turn off a systematic trading strategy is to use 100% of historical max drawdown. Basically, if the worst drawdown that your system has ever had historically is $8,000 per contract and you are currently at a loss of $8,000 per contract, that is a good time to turn off that system. Let's look at an example of this idea of 100% max historical drawdown. If we look at a performance report for a live cattle 135 minute bar strategy, there's a nice upward sloping equity curve, but this strategy has had a bit of a drawdown recently. We had a bad trade just a few weeks ago. We had a, what looks like a stop loss and that stop loss had a trade loss of about $3,300 per contract. So that means we're seeing a bit of a dent in that upward sloping equity curve. Now, if we look at a performance summary, we can see that the max drawdown for this system intraday peak to valley was $12,000. Close to close for a trade was about $11,000. And if we look at a chart, we can see where that occurred. That occurred right here. So the current drawdown of $3,000 is a small fraction of the max historical drawdown of $10,000. So if we were to use 
use that 100% max historical drawdown as a threshold for turning off this system, we would still have some room here. We'd be about a third of the way to that max historical drawdown. We could have two more bad trades that would lose $3,000 before we'd get close to that threshold. Now, why use 100% of maximum historical drawdown? Why not use 75% or 50%? The reason for that is you want your threshold to be wide enough so that you give an underperforming strategy enough room to recover, but you also want to recognize that maybe that strategy is broken. You want a threshold that's realistic so that you're not losing 100%, 150%, 200% of your max historical drawdown. And most importantly, find a threshold that you are comfortable with, maybe because of your portfolio size or your risk tolerance or the systems that you're running. Maybe you want to use 50% of max historical drawdown as your threshold and risk that you'll turn off systems too early that might recover later. That is up to you. The most important concept here is that that threshold is a red line. Just as we've spent this whole course talking about the importance of automating our systematic trading strategies, we need to recognize the importance of automating our portfolio management and automating the decision process around turning off underperforming strategies. Have that game plan in place, stick to it, turn off that system when it gets past whatever threshold you've established. The number three step for properly anticipating and managing drawdowns and turning off underperforming trading systems. Have a deep bench, have lots of systematic trading strategies waiting to be traded. Strategies that are incubating, that are paper trading, that are performing well, in real time and that can replace any underperforming strategies that are currently in your portfolio. Now, this is the number one question that I get in my inbox every single week. How to best rotate strategies, how to replace underperforming strategies with strategies that are more in tune with the current market. And because I'm a huge soccer fan and I played soccer at university, I always bring up the example of Premier League football. English Premier League football, like a lot of other European football leagues, comprises 20 different teams. These are the best 20 teams in England, but that top 20 list is always changing. Every year, the bottom three teams in the Premier League are relegated. They're basically demoted down to the next league, the Championship League. And the top three teams from the Championship get promoted up to Premier League football. Now, I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. This is how I think about my trading portfolio. At Peak Trading Research, we are incubating hundreds of different systematic trading strategies. And those strategies that are performing best, that are most in tune with the market, that are generating paper profits, including the realistic costs of slippage and commissions, those strategies rise up to become the peak 10 list that we post monthly at peakalgo.com. So for my own trading, I always have a list of strategies right in front of me every month via the peak 10 that could easily replace any underperforming strategies that I'm currently trading. So whether you are getting new strategies from YouTube channels or strategy courses or from strategy books, or you have access to the same list of great real-time strategies strategies that I'm looking at every month from peakalgo.com, you should have a deep bench. You should have a list of strategies that you are ready to promote if you want to relegate some of your underperforming strategies. Bottom line strategies underperform, strategies break, have a game plan in place for when this happens, have a predefined threshold in place that helps you automate the decision process around when to turn off an underperforming strategy. And finally, have a deep bench, have a list of strategies incubating that are performing well in real time that you can promote to your portfolio to replace those relegated underperforming systematic trading strategies. Following these three steps will help you deal with drawdowns, effectively turn off underperforming trading systems, and improve the long-term performance of your portfolio of systems.
systematic trading strategies. In algorithmic trading, psychology still matters. Any systematic trader who has turned on real algorithmic trading strategies will tell you that there are ups and downs from making and losing money. In this section, we'll talk about algorithmic trading psychology, some of the common pitfalls of algorithmic trading, and we're going to do that by walking through 10 actionable tips that you can use to stay in the game, boost your confidence, and improve your long long-term trading profitability. Tip number one is focus on what you can control. As a systematic trader, you are not making decisions when markets move. That is what your trading system is set up to do. And the good news is that that system is going to make those decisions more quickly and more accurately than you ever could. Now, for many algorithmic traders, myself included, that's a huge positive. It's a huge relief to not have to be glued to markets all the time. Your role as a systematic trader is to make sure that your system is working correctly. Most importantly, that your positions match, like we talked about in the section on getting started, that you are trading the correct contract, and that your trading platform is consistently connected to the market. Remember that your trading systems are set up to make money over the course of months and quarters and years, not every single minute of the day. There is no trading system that can do that. Again, focus on what you can control. Tip number two is trust the process. As Larry Williams said, trading systems work, system traders do not. If you turn on a systematic trading strategy, you have gone through a lot of steps to get to that point. You've built the strategy, optimized the strategy, tested it, incubated it. Your system is set up to be be a great trader and make great decisions. Let it run. Tip number three is be consistent. One of the first things that I noticed when I started systematic trading, when I actually turned on real trading strategies was how slow it is. Most successful systematic trading strategies, especially the ones that consider the realistic costs of slippage and commissions are multi-day or multi-week breakout and swing strategies. This means that even if you are running a basket of 20 or 30 or 40 different trading systems, there might be days that you don't have any new trades. Profitable systematic trading is a long haul. It's a process. It can move slower than you might anticipate. Now, I love equity curves. I love looking at those nice upward sloping cumulative profit lines, the type that we've gone through again and again in this course, but they can be deceptive. Remember, for those equity curves, we're often looking at 10, 12, 15 years of data. And if you look at any equity curve, there are periods of months or quarters or sometimes even years of underperformance. So again, be consistent and expect that this process might take a little longer than you first anticipated. This tip reminds me of one of my favorite tweets that applies not just to trading, but to life in general. 90% of success can be boiled down to consistently doing the obvious thing for an uncommonly long period of time without convincing yourself that you're smarter than you are. Be consistent, commit to your trading systems, and trust the process. Tip number four is aggressively eliminate the things that can go wrong in your trading process. Trading is all about confidence, and eliminating the things that can go wrong wrong will help boost your confidence. One of the biggest pitfalls here with systematic trading is connectivity, is making sure that your trading platform can access the market. If you are worried about your computer losing power or losing its connection to the internet, you should strongly consider using a virtual private server, a VPS. Some great virtual private server options include speedy trading servers, who I've used before 
before and been really impressed with. There's OVH, there's Speedy Page. All of these companies are great solutions. They'll offer you 99.9% .9 uptime. And most importantly, a virtual private server will give you the confidence that you are always connected to the market. And this idea of eliminating the things that can go wrong also applies to your trading platform. If you find that TradeStation is missing trades, stop using TradeStation. If you find that multi-charts is not mapping contracts correctly, stop using multi-charts. If your trading platform is not working for you, use a different trading platform. Now I'm going to lean in here to properly emphasize this next point. No matter what, do not, under any circumstance, try to build your own trading platform. The road to profitable systematic trading is littered with the bones of traders who have tried to build their own trading platforms. You have a lot of great options. Find one that works for you and run with it. And again, to bring back a point from earlier in this course, your advantage, your role as a systematic trader is in building a basket of uncorrelated systematic trading strategies. Do your best to eliminate any anything that gets in the way of that. Tip number five is be pragmatic, be realistic, think like a carpenter. Your strategies are tools for making money. If that tool stops working, stop using that tool. There is no such thing as a perfect trading strategy. There are no trading strategies that are worth falling in love with. Again, be pragmatic. If your strategies are making you money, keep trading those strategies. If they stop making you money, turn off those strategies. Tip number six follows tip number five nicely, and that is define your rules and stick to your rules. If you have written down ahead of time a threshold where you will turn off a strategy and you get to that threshold, turn off that strategy. And on the flip side, if you have a strategy position that's performing really well and making a lot of money, don't just take profit on that position. Maybe that position is from a strategy that aims to catch big breakout moves and maybe that long-term equity curve relies on you catching some of those big breakout moves. Define your rules ahead of time, stick to those rules, automate your decision-making process, and trust your systems. Let your trading systems run. And believe me, I know that's easier said than done. This is a quote from the book Trading Systems by Urban Jackal and Emilio Tomasini. Once you have a trading system, the biggest obstacle is trust trusting it. Tip number seven is start small and start before you're ready. You are going to learn so much from your first actual live systematic strategy trade. It is a huge deal to start actually trading. So do what you can to get to that point. If that means paper trading for a while in a SIM account, or it means trading a mini contract or a contract with a smaller notional size, do whatever you can to take that that big step to go from analyzing algo strategies to actually trading algo strategies. And remember to listen to your gut. Start in a way that you feel comfortable with. If your portfolio has too much volatility or you're up at night thinking about any one system or any one position, pump the brakes a little bit. Remember, in the end, winning is sleeping better. Tip number eight is view algorithmic trading as a project. View it as an investment in your education and your analytical tool set. If you are connected to markets in any way, it is a huge deal that you understand algorithmic trading. The key concepts that you have learned in this course around coding, strategy building, risk in portfolio management, market dynamics, have big benefits beyond just the profitability of the trading strategies that you're running. Another way to say all this is whether you're in economics or finance or commodity markets, if you want potential employers and headhunters running to your LinkedIn page, you need to lean into quantitative analysis and algorithmic trading. But again, view all of this as a project, as a process that is worth investing in. Tip number nine is don't go it alone. Find other traders that you can talk to and find other 
traders that you can share systems with. Now, I used to obsess about not sharing systems. I used to think that I had some proprietary view on the market. And if I shared it with one or two other traders, it might lose some edge. When I first got into strategy development, I even hired some coders and I'd make them sign NDAs so that they wouldn't share any of my code elsewhere. Now, I have completely gotten over that for a few different reasons. First of all, any trading system that you can come up with has probably been built before. There are hedge funds out there that are using quantum computing to test millions of different strategies every year. They've probably figured out your trading strategy. And if you do share a trading system, anyone who looks at that system will likely make their own small tweaks so it ends up executing in a slightly different way than your system in the first place. Richard Dennis, who came up with the turtle trading system famously said, I could publish my rules in the newspaper and no one would follow them. There is so much upside from sharing strategies, from talking to other traders about what they're doing, what they're actually trading, how they think about markets. That is so much greater than the downside of another trader maybe trading your exact trading system in a huge liquid market. It probably won't even make a difference. Bottom line, don't go it alone. Find a network of other traders traders and don't be afraid to share your trading systems. Tip number 10 is find your edge. Find what you are good at. Find what makes your trading different and profitable and really lean into that. Maybe it's structuring seasonal trades or finding a unique way to analyze commitment of traders data. Or maybe you work for a big commercial trading company and you have access to private cash data or weather data that no one else has access to. Or or maybe you like trading those smaller illiquid commodity markets like orange juice and rice and lumber that most hedge funds just don't have access to. Find your edge, find what makes you profitable and lean into it. There it is, there are 10 tips that can help your algorithmic trading psychology, boost your confidence and help you avoid some of the pitfalls of algorithmic trading. Whether you are a professional commodity trader or you are a beginner who understands the huge advantages of systematic trading, there is a lot of upside for you in your professional development and your trading profitability to learn more about systematic trading. So beyond this course, let's talk about what are the other resources that are out there that are available to you, specifically books, strategy testing tools, strategy building courses, and YouTube channels. What are the best books on algorithmic trading? These are my top four in order of when they were published. Number one, Design, Testing, and Optimization of Trading Systems by Robert Pardo. Number two, Beating the Financial Futures Market by Art Collins. Number three, Trading Systems by Urban Jekyll and Emilio Tomasini. And number four, Building Winning Algorithmic Trading Systems by Kevin Davey. All four of these books are fantastic resources that cover strategy development, testing, optimization, risk management, portfolio construction, effectively the building blocks for constructing realistic systematic trading strategies that have the best chance of working well in real time. What are the most popular algorithmic trading strategy courses? The three courses that I hear of the most often are Kevin Davies' strategy Strategy Factory course, Andrea Unger's Unger Academy, and Jeff Swanson's Easy Language Mastery courses. Now, I've taken a few paid courses from Kevin Davey. I've attended a few seminars hosted by Andrea Unger, and I'm a big fan of Jeff Swanson's blog. All of these guys have slightly different approaches to strategy testing, strategy walk forwards, the use of filters and custom bar charts, but all three of these courses are good options if you want to get deeper into systematic trading. What are the best strategy testing tools? The top three here are multi-opt, which follows the same walk forward heavy strategy development process taught by Kevin Davey, the DLPAL Deep Learning Price Action Lab at priceactionlab.com. It analyzes lots of different price patterns to develop strategies. And finally, the Build Alpha 
strategy development tool at buildalpha.com. Finally, what are the best YouTube channels? This list is very small in terms of channels that show actual strategy code and realistic equity curves, including the costs of slippage and commissions. It basically comes down to Kevin Davies channel and the peak trading research channel. I can't count the number of times that I've seen a trading channel share a beautiful upward sloping equity curve with hundreds of trades. And then someone inevitably asks in the comments, well, did you include commission costs? Did you include the slippage costs of trading that contract so many times? And the creator's answer is always inevitably, well, I didn't, but it's not that much. It's not a big deal. Well, if it's not a big deal, if it's not a big cost, include it in your development process. Otherwise, it's not a realistic system. This was part of the reason that we started our strategy of the month videos, which have now been running for more than a year. This is where we show fully coded, realistic trading systems that perform well, including the costs of slippage and commissions across all major agriculture, energy, and metals markets month after month. So that's it. That's the list of strategy books, strategy testing tools, strategy building courses, and YouTube channels that can help you on your journey to profitable systematic trading. And of course, if you're interested in fully coded systematic trading strategies that are performing well in real time, you can subscribe to our Peak 10 Monthly Strategies at peakalgo.com. And you can follow Peak Trading Research on YouTube, on LinkedIn, and on Twitter for commodity market insights and real systematic trading strategies. Bottom line, there are a lot of great resources out there for you, and there is no better investment in your future career and your trading profitability than to learn more about algorithmic trading. One final comment to wrap up this 2023 algorithmic trading course. You can do this. You can build, test, and automate systematic trading strategies to reap all the massive advantages of evidence-based trading. You have the building blocks you need, the tools you need, the additional resources you can reference. And my hope is that this algorithmic trading course helps put you on a path in terms of your education, your confidence and your trading profitability. If you have any questions or feedback about this course, you can leave them in the comments below. If you'd like access to the full 2023 algo course packet, you can find it at peakalgo.com. Good luck algorithmic trading and we'll see you soon.